the play. Rudolph. Rudolph. Yeah. Rudolph had a better day. Put this up here. He was being punished because he crashed the sleigh. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask the board members to stay standing, if you wouldn't mind, and Jane and Michael as well. Uh, as you can see, we have our beautiful, ugly sweaters this evening, and I assume our <laughs> counterparts at the school committee as well. And tonight, the reason we're wearing these is really try to advocate for the North, uh, North Reading Transcript does the Neighbor Helping Neighbor Fund, and our goal tonight is to make some awareness for it, hope folks will contribute to help those in need. And our competition tonight is to vote for the Board of Selectmen if you can, because the losing committee will be the ones con contributing towards the transcript fund of $100. So we look forward to the challenge. We look forward to your voting. And I want to thank everyone, my board especially, for wearing these ridiculous, ugly sweaters. <laughs> and my request, I made you do it. And I appreciate you honoring the request. <laughs> and you look amazing. Thank you. So please, let's get started with tonight's business. Maureen, you, got a, you don't have a microphone. If you wouldn't mind stepping to the microphone, though, and just take a second. Yes, Maureen, yes. How, do people, yes. how will people be able to vote? If you could just tell us real quick. Hi. <laughs> um, we're going to uh, post uh, a link to our Facebook page, the North Reading Transcript. And on that Facebook page will be a link back to the North Reading Community Connections page, as well as um, the North Reading News page. It's a new page that Al Pereira and Advanced Photo recently started, so folks can tune into any of those um, three pages. Um, and those who don't have um, internet access, uh, you know, older folks are welcome to just give us a call or have someone send us an email, just get us to the vote however they, however they see fit. And uh, we're going to have it run and go from um, this Thursday through New Year's Eve to give people, you know, time to to uh, look at the photos either in print or online. And how long will folks be able to donate to the Neighbor Helping Neighbor Fund? Uh, it usually goes through the end of the year, and then the first week in January we wrap it up with the, the, all the final donations. So we're Thank over 17000 right now. Wow, um, excellent. Last year we hit 40000 so we got a little bit ways to go. So right. well, every little bit helps. Mr. Masseri. Yeah. While you're, while you're in the public domain, uh, why don't you tell everybody that might be watching tonight where they can make the donation? Okay. Um, you can mail a donation to uh, the North Reading Transcript Post Office Box 7, 01864 in North Reading. Um, you can also drop it off in person at uh, Reading Cooperative Bank at 170 Park Street, and uh, they will record your donation. Um, you can mail it to us also. Um, at our home office at 26 Albion Street in Wakefield, Mass, 01880. Um, so those, those are the three ways of, of doing it. Thank you. You're and Mr. Chair, if yes. you go on to North Reading Community Connection right now, you can see us in all of our glory. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> well, let's, um, we have anyone here for public comment this evening? No one here for public comment? We're going to get started with tonight uh, with the mi minutes. Mr. Schultz, if you could start with the November 28, 2017 regular and executive session. Sure. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 28, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. Second. I got a motion by Mr. Schultz. Uh, was that Mr. O'Leary? Oh, Mrs. Manupelli. Mrs. Manupelli. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 28, 2017 executive session minutes as written. A motion to second. Second. Second by Mr. Kelly. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. November, no, November 30, 2017. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 30, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 30, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? 
None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, December 4th. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 4, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 4, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Next piece of business is going to be <coughs> ratify the memorandum of agreement with the North Reading Firefighter Union 1857. Mr. Gilberto, would you like to start things off? Certainly. Um, so the document is a couple of pages long, but I'll do my best to try to summarize some of the more salient points for the, uh, for the public. And this is a result of um, uh, ongoing negotiations between the town, represented by myself, the Human Resources uh, Director, Mr. Collins, um, Selectman, uh, Ms. Area Selectman Prisco, and then um, prior, to, uh, uh, prior to that, Selectman Yule as well. So uh, multiple uh, months and actually sending into years worth of negotiations uh, for the agreement. The members of the bargaining team are here this evening. I thank them for their, for their presence. Um, we've reached a tentative agreement with the fire uh, union for a term covering fiscal year um, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So it's a four-year term retroactive to July 1st, 2016. And some of the uh, items that are in there, and I'll just try to kind of highlight some of the areas that, uh, that were the source of the discussion. Um, as has been the case with our other units, this agreement includes reforms for new hired employees, including uh, longevity um, uh, payments and uh, vacation time, and uh, establishes a accrual program for vacation time for newly hired employees. It also establishes uh, some parameters around the uh, town's existing education incentive program and makes some changes to that program for existing employees. Um, the <coughs> excuse me, agreement also calls to reduce end of career uh, sick time buyback for our um, long term employees who are uh, those employees hired before August 1st of 2011. The agreement also includes some language that uh, strengthens the um, role and responsibilities for the officer in charge uh, overseeing the department. Uh, townspeople know we have a, an advanced life support um, program or paramedic program that we've been operating since 2012 and this agreement serves to make some adjustments to update the responsibilities and the, um, uh, the program associated with that for the individuals in the department who are charged with overseeing that, um, that program. Uh, the agreement um, includes some changes to the way uh, we call back uh, and fill uh, staffing in the department uh, and it's intended to ensure that we have uh, appropriate staffing on the apparatus when it leaves the fire station uh, for a particular um, response uh, and also to uh, ensure um, uh, that any overtime that might need to be worked is uh, spread, uh, uh, has the opportunity to be spread as evenly as possible amongst all of the department members. And so uh, those changes we think will result in an opportunity to um, uh, have uh, additional participation from uh, all members of the department to try to address the responses. And again, just for those who don't know, we have um, a department, comparatively speaking, that is smaller but that does uh, much of its work and is able to protect the community uh, through the reliance of the, the employees who are responding on overtime uh, from their time off to try to uh, make sure we have the appropriate staffing. This uh, further, further uh, updates that to reflect what we believe the town's needs are. Um, with regard to the wage increase, uh, wages are slated to adjust consistent with uh, our other collective bargaining agreements, which include a 1% cost of living agreement for a cost of living adjustment, excuse me, for each of the fiscal years, and then a one and a half percent um, reform adjustment uh, for fiscal year 17, 18, and 19, and for fiscal year uh, 20, is a half percent reform for uh, a half percent associated with reform and one percent associated with uh, adjustment in the EMT wage rates. So I think that that's a fair summary of. Uh, of the, the agreement. Um, I think I caught most of the, the, the items on there. Um, it's a multiple page document, but that, that's largely what's going on with this particular 
um, agreement. And uh, I think we're, we're pleased to be here with this opportunity for the board to consider ratification this evening. We received notice that the union ratified uh, on Friday morning, um, which we certainly were uh, pleased to hear. Um, and I, I can tell you that it's been a, a lengthy discussion involving not only the individuals here, but individuals uh, who helped to facilitate the discussion that brought us to this evening's date. Okay, sure. Well, I just want to take the opportunity to thank the union members uh, for being here this evening, and especially the ones in the bargaining unit. Uh, I, I only participated for about a f several months. I know Mr. Masseri, Mr. Yule initially kicked things off a little over a year ago. And these contracts take a while. I know people sitting at home thinking about, oh, geez, over a year to negotiate a contract. Well, you know, these aren't, you know, simple contracts. There's a lot of moving parts to them, and there's a lot of challenges on both sides. And I think we came to a great conclusion. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, structural changes that are made for both sides to benefit both sides. And, and that's the way it's supposed to work. And I want to thank you for your patience and your understanding. You know, the town has continued challenges with expenses, and we're trying to get to a point where we have sustainability in every one of our contracts. And working with you and be, your willingness to work with us to try to find at least the, the next step towards that sustainability, I think we made great strides in doing that so I want to thank you uh, for that and I look forward to hopefully uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a vote here in a little bit but I'd love to give you the opportunity to come up if you want to say a few words and but uh, again thank you for your time the commitment you guys made to meet with us on a continuous basis thank you mr. chairman um, I'm going to touch your computer screen here. Uh, my name is Matt Carroll 16 Peter Road uh, North Reading uh, um, there's a procedural thing that Bob had his hand up. Oh, I, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. If you couldn't mind, Matt. Yeah, sure, absolutely. I'd rather, I would like to recognize Mr. Masseri first. Absolutely. Thank you. I did not see that. Okay. Mr. Masseri, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I just want to say all the hours that were spent coming to a, what I think is a successful conclusion, uh, what stuck out most even though many times we were in disagreement, right. you were all gentlemen thank in you. the process, and I thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Michael. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so my name is Matt Carroll, 16 Peter Road, North Reading. Uh, tonight I'm here representing the proud men of the North Reading Firefighters Union, uh, currently serving uh, my second term as its president. Uh, I'm here tonight to thank all involved in the successful negotiations, we hope. Uh, the new collective bargaining agreement between the town and the firefighters union. Uh, like the chairman said, this process began, at, well, Mr. Gilberto said, uh, this process actually began over two years ago, uh, November of 2015. <coughs> uh, we notified the town of our intent to negotiate. Um, and again, I'd like to also acknowledge the commitment and patience to everybody involved. Um, I'd first like to thank the other members of my team, uh, Mike Tanyan, uh, Tom Harris. Uh, as a group, like you said, we've spent countless hours text, emails, um, personal meetings, phone conversations between ourselves, the attorneys, and everything else, um, you know, to bring forth a, what, we, what we see as a successful agreement. Um, I'd also like to thank Town Administrator Mike Gilberto, Selectman Masseri, Chairman Crisco, uh, former Selectman Jeff Ewell, and uh, Human Resources Director Bob Collins. Thank you very much. Um, from our standpoint, we think both sides worked well together. Um, both sides, again, showed great patience uh, in each other and both represented each other's sides uh, to the best of their abilities. Uh, we feel the agreement achieves the needs of the department and uh, its firefighters and at the same time addressing some of the board's objectives. Uh, is it perfect? No, but like you said, Mr. Chairman, uh, negotiations is, isn't about either side getting exactly what they want. Uh, it's about achieving something that both sides uh, agree that is, is a good thing for both sides. Uh, so thank you all again to all that were involved. And uh, finally, I'd like to recognize Chief Bill Warnock for his commitment uh, and passion to this process. Uh, I think we can all agree that without Bill, uh, arriving at this point would have been uh, a little more difficult. And I think we can all agree that commitment and passion are two words that embody all that he stands for. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'd like to take a minute in this public forum to say a few words about Chief Warnock. That's okay, I promise Absolutely. to be brief. Uh, in one month's time, uh, Chief William Warnock, known to many as Bill, Chief or Billy, 
is set to retire after serving not only this community and this department, but the entire fire service for the past 35 years. During these past 35 years, Billy has saved many lives, cared for thousands of our sick and injured, and has fought to ensure that the fire department had what it needed to get the job done. His motto was simple, and it is hung on the wall outside of his office for everyone to read. It says, when the bell rings, we go. Uh, that's Billy. That's who he is. No matter what's going on in our personal lives, no matter what the discussions are at the firehouse, when called to duty, everything gets put aside. There's work to be done. To the members of our community, we say this. Bill Warnock has been there when you needed him, even if you didn't know you needed him. He has always been there. He has always had you back. He has worked to make the members of our, your fire department stronger and better at what we do each and every day. Bill is leaving the fire department better than when he found it, something we all wish to achieve. And he has always had our back. Sorry. Lastly, Billy, we wish to say thank you and know that we will have a your back. Thank you. Would you like an opportunity to say anything? <laughs> Stop that. I don't want to put you on the spot. Do not feel compelled, but I would like to honor you the respect if you would like the opportunity. Mr. Chairman, thank you. It's been an honor to serve this town for 35 years. I love those guys. They're my family. I love the town. I grew up here. Nothing's more important to make sure that everyone's safe at all times. We may not have the same objective all the time, but we always work to a resolution, and that's important. But I couldn't be prouder to be the boss of the North Running Fire Department. And if you asked me 10 years ago if I saw myself doing this, I would have told you no. I'm a firefighter, I like going to calls. It was very difficult to go into the back room. But I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I had the help that I had on both sides of the, of both sides of the field, and uh, it was very nice what they said. So thanks. Thank Mr. Goldberg. I just would like to also note, I, I mentioned a number of folks who participated in the negotiation, but the chief served as a representative of management, but also as a facilitator in the discussion along the way to try to find something that we, we felt we could all feel would be appropriate for the men of the fire department and, and for the town as well. So, Chief, I want to I want to thank you for your efforts. I want to thank you for your patience in the process as well, and I want to thank you for your counsel. Thank you. All right. So before we take a motion, I just wanted to uh, take a minute just to recognize our HR director, Mr. Robert Collins. You know, this is the first time. At, I've worked with you uh, this year. Uh, I've done these CBAs before. I've been in the collective bargaining agreements now for the last eight years, uh, different times. And having you in the room with us, I think it certainly gave us uh, some adult supervision, I will say. And it's so it's been a worthy investment of the town has made in you. And uh, you have completely exceeded my expectations. And, and Liz as well, uh, by having both of you participate in these collective bargaining agreements behind the scenes, certainly helped us get to these resolutions so you, you know, a lot of credit goes to both of you um, you know what we do we do a lot of talking we may do a lot of complaining we may do a lot of crying uh, but you guys really bring us back to center and without your support and the town administrator well with his guidance uh, we certainly can get there and, and chief warnick last thing to you i will say that's been absolutely an honor uh, these years i think we've had as you said we may, we may have i think we've all we've always had the same objective but we always had different, maybe some different paths to get there, but we always found a way to get there. And I respect you for that, and thank you for your service to the town. It's truly been a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to seeing you around. Uh, hopefully you're not gonna go too far away from us. So with that, I'd like to take a motion. By my math, Chief, you must have started at age eight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Town of North Reading and North Reading Firefighters on 1875 for a period of July 1, 2016 through June 30, 2020. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me just uh, preface my comments by saying I probably would have taken that bet 10 years ago when I've seen you in the position and even when it came available. I wasn't so sure you were going to do it, but boy, am I glad you did. And uh, you really have done a tremendous job in leading, uh, leading these men and leading the department, and, and you have left it a better uh, department than when you came in. And uh, long, healthy retirement to you, which is still a month ago, so don't go too fast. Count. You're counting, I bet <laughs> you got the countdown. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, let me just state up front that, uh, again, I think this is uh, uh, the best agreement that could be reached. Uh, but I don't necessarily agree with it, so I'm uh, right up front I'm going to be voting, voting in opposition to it. That does not, uh, please don't misinterpret this as uh, a lack of appreciation for uh, what's, uh, what the fire department, members of the fire department do for us, how they protect us, and how they uh, uh, answer the calls every day. They do a tremendous job. Uh, to me, this is a little bit bigger picture in relation to our other contract negotiations, our overall goals as a board, and um, you know, where we're ending up in relation to um, some of the objectives that the board has uh, publicly stated, and then uh, in the executive session, uh, work through our, our strategies. And I think that this just comes up a, a little bit short um, in relation to that, but it's not that the... Uh, what is being agreed to that the members of the North Reading Fire Department don't deserve it. But I think at this particular juncture, uh, with all that uh, we've gone through, and I think this is like a, at least a third try uh, with this, along with some mediation in between. Uh, I just think that the, uh, when we look at, to compare and contrast what other collective bargaining units have uh, given in the way of reforms, there's a little bit more in relation to uh, what the contract that we're agreeing to is. Uh, but again, I think it's very deserving. I uh, compliment my uh, fellow board members, the administration, and the bargaining team, because it hasn't been easy uh, over these last couple of years to, uh, to come to an agreement. So I congratulate you on reaching the agreement, but I'll be voting no. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. <coughs> Any other board Are we good? I just had a quick question for um, um, Firefighter Carroll. If you could just come to the podium, I have a quick question for you. Was it unanimous on your group? I don't need a total, but was it unanimous? Uh, not, not unanimous, but I would say uh, overwhelmingly okay. positive. So Mr. Mo Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Leary not voting in favor of this, it sounds like he's not going to vote in favor of this. I think right. you can see where it's, it's an yeah, equal on both exactly. sides. Like you said, we, we, we work our, do our best to, yeah. you know, we have a, a group to try to appease and, and same here. So we, you know, we're not going to reach everybody on every single item, but in, in general, uh, you know, not you know, but overwhelmingly it was seen as a positive uh, yeah. piece of paper. So, okay. so and no, no offense by uh, taken yeah. by Mr. O'Leary. We know no, and, I, and, and I think that's okay. And I will say I won't speak for Mr. O'Leary, but I think some of his comments too. It's really back to the board members as well because we did go into this entire uh, collective bargaining season right. with a strategy, and in some ways, along the we maybe lost, we came right. off the road a little bit, right. and I think this is just a message to all of us to keep. Right. Let's get back to the road that we all agreed on. And so I don't think it is against you, the, your, your board members, your committee members, your, your, your membership. Uh, I think it's just a big picture perspective when you may see one no vote. Right. It's not just because of the department. Yeah, we, we, if, I, if I'm we'll, summarizing. We'll, 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 we'll right, and, and you, as you recall, we've acknowledged that you know, we know what the objectives are. And it's just, yeah. like I said, it's a matter of how much you give and how much you don't. So I appreciate it. But I think it's a message that should go all the all the union members. Okay. You know, we, we have tried to pick a strategy. We work well in advance of going into it. Right. And you know, we need to get back to that strategy. And it's not because we're trying to single anyone out. Right. It's that we are trying to get to sustainability. And that's the most important thing. And I mean, Mr. O'Leary has been a big advocate to, or to create sustainability in our contracts. And I support him in those efforts. And absolutely. I can understand why he's, he's yeah, taken this position. We absolutely respect that position. We have no, no issues whatsoever. Thank you. So if there's no other comments, uh, I'll no, take no, it. Just yeah. Thank you for your, for your comments and your comments too, Matt. Uh, but, you know, I spent 25 years on the other side of the table 
uh, as a union official and uh, contract negotiator, so I certainly appreciate uh, all the effort that's put in and the positions that you take. And, and there's a lot of give and take, and I, I think an awful lot of what's in this agreement is, uh, is terrific, and I think it's uh, to the benefit of the community as a whole, and as, as well as uh, your membership, as far as sustaining what we can uh, deliver and afford to deliver services. But the overall big picture is a little bit different. So again, appreciate and applaud your efforts, and, uh, and I applaud the outcome. Now I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. <coughs> it passes four to one. Thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and Happy Holidays to the, the entire fight upon it. Thank you. Okay. Next business is to ratify the MOA for the DPW Local 25. Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the town of North Reading and DPW Local uh, 25. If you wouldn't mind, yep. Mr. Schultz, I'm going to give the town administrator maybe an opportunity just oh, yeah. to make a quick summary, and then uh, we'll take a motion, if that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll do my best to briefly summarize uh, this uh, memorandum of agreement between the town and the DPW uh, union, uh, which was ratified by the membership of that union this afternoon. Uh, this <laughs> excuse me, would be a three-year agreement, agreement covering fiscal years 18, 19, and 20. It would be effective July 1st, 2017, which is this past July. And it includes some reforms to the um, benefits for uh, new employees, namely uh, changes to the longevity payments and changes to the vacation time, as well as moving to an accrual for vacation time. All of this sounds familiar, gentlemen, to, the, to you, I'm sure. <laughs> So again, this was something that was identified, and this is a, we, we, uh, we didn't get to exactly the same place, but we got, I think, fairly close with regard to the negotiations in, 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 with the individual units. We also included some changes relative to uh, requiring certification for an employee who might be absent for more than three, uh, three days. We have uh, created the ability to establish a position uh, known as operations manager or something similar there too, which would not be as part of the union um, uh, covered uh, membership and employees uh, providing supervisory oversight for our, uh, our employees. Bear with me one moment, Mr. Chairman. No problem. We've also got the uh, ability to make, uh, to, uh, we've also been able to work cooperatively with the members of the union to come up with some reforms uh, that were identified as areas uh, that we could improve upon last year in the DPW, namely um, uh, the ability to institute a, uh, a more um, detailed and modernized uh, time management system in the department, uh, as well as the ability to utilize an automatic vehicle locator system uh, or GPS for uh, town-owned uh, DPW vehicles. The town doesn't have any immediate term uh, uh, intention to do that, but it's something that we felt was important to discuss, and uh, we reached a favorable agreement with the employees to have the ability to implement that uh, as a protection both for the town and for the employee uh, as well. Uh, there were some changes to, uh, to the work schedule, namely uh, relative to uh, uh, lunch and uh, um, scheduled work breaks. Um, in terms of uh, compensation, uh, we're uh, making some adjustments to some of the uh, stipends that we provide to individuals for having specialized training um, in a particular area or having a particular license in a particular area. Um, there uh, also were some changes to the, um, to the requirements for uh, maintaining licensing for the employees. And there is a wage uh, adjustment uh, which uh, equals out to 1% um, cost of living and 2% increase for reforms for each of the three fiscal years covered. And I believe that that covers nearly everything. Oh, and we've also, uh, it's something that we encountered over the past 18 months, the ability to be able to hire a new employee uh, at uh, a step that is not the first step of the uh, contract is something we felt was important uh, in order to be able to maintain our membership, uh, our, our employment levels at the appropriate level. Um, in main, namely, this could be impactful if we're trying to recruit somebody from another community or if we're trying to incentivize someone to take the position who maybe has a, an established work history. Uh, so that was also something that was significant and again reached through uh, negotiations with the union and ratified by the union this afternoon.
Well, this was another uh, contract that Mr. Masseri and I worked together on with uh, the town administrator and the HR director. And I will say that it, it was uh, not as lengthy, but it certainly was a lot of meetings. I think we, I think we ended up with five meetings with lengthy hours to them. And, but I think <coughs> it came to a great agreement. Um, you, know, you had mentioned these uh, stipends, and I've never been a fan of stipends. But this particular department, uh, I got, was educated a little bit about how important the stipends are because, you know, just simple thing like pesticides. Well, you know what? You have to have a license to put down pesticides. And I understand now why it's important because when you try to go outside services for those types of things, they are very expensive. To have that kind of service in-house <coughs> is a benefit to the town. So in those kinds of cases, I think, in the DPW department, more than others, uh, I can, I, I really understood and the DPW did a great job explaining to me the benefit to, uh, to the town why we have stipends. So uh, I certainly did have a, a, a lesson learned on that. So I want to thank them for that education. So if there's not anybody else want to say anything? Mr. Masseri? Uh, the comment I'll make is uh, having been involved not only in this contract but the previous one, which was only a year ago because we were playing catch up. Uh, the negotiating team and their representative on this round uh, was so, so much better and so much easier to work with than the previous contract. And I'm not necessarily pointing at the members of the DPW, but the member of Local 25 who represented them, not this time around, but the time before, for those that might have been there. So I thank you for all your efforts. and. Uh, I was pleased, along with Michael, to uh, present to the board an agreement, and hopefully uh, the board will react positively to it this evening. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the town of North Reading and DPW Local 25 for the period of July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2020. Second. Second. Motion and a second by Mr. Mignopelli. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, unanimous. All right. Yes, Mr. Next one is to ratify is to ratify the integrated agreement with North Reading administrative staff. Mr. Chairman, through you, the next two items, the North Reading administrative staff and the library, this is effectively taking a memorandum of, of agreement that have been entered into with these two units uh, earlier this year, signed off and implemented and effectively updating the existing contract language, uh, the entire contract document to include them. So there's no new benefits that are being extended, there's no change to benefits that's being extended, there's no additional time being added to the contract. It's simply uh, an administrative action to create and estab to establish a single unified document for these two collective bargaining agreements for both the town and for its employees. And these are both for agreements that have terms ending June 30th, 2018. Any discussion? Mr. O'Leary. I'm just happy to see these uh, integrated agreements coming to fruition. Uh, we've been trying to get this accomplished for a number of years, and it uh, certainly makes it a little bit easier going into the next round of negotiations if we have one document that memorializes the terms and conditions of the contract. So it's, uh, it's something we've been trying to accomplish for a number of years, and we're just about there, which is great. It's certainly a big part of the process that I don't think we've been given a lot of uh, oversight to in the past year. So it's it's great to see that we have it now part of the process. This will memorialize it tonight. So, so I'll take a motion. Sure. Mr. Chair, I move to ratify the integrated agreement between the town of North Running and the North Running administrative staff for the period of July 1, 2015 through June 30, 2018. Second. second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Next is the ratify the integrated agreement with the library. Is there a motion, Mr. Chair? Unless uh, the town administrator has any discussion. Any further? 
Same, same as the last one. Same, right? Same. Yeah. I'll take the motion. Same discussion as the last one. Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the integrated agreement between the Town of North Reading and the North Reading Library Staff Association Local 4928 for the period of July 1, 2015 through June 30, 2018. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Next. We are going to vote to set the 2018 ambulance rates. Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And through you, um, we have a brief presentation that uh, we're happy to go through, but uh, to give the kind of summary for the board, uh, the chief has been working with um, Comstar and our finance department to make recommendations relative to our rates. And this is something that periodi periodically occurs uh, I want to thank the chief for his uh, efforts in talking with them. You have a form in there that effectively shows a recommended changes to the rate structure. And so just to give kind of a quick summary, and these will be for rates effective January 1st, 2018. What Comstar did was they took the average of the top 50 rates for their clients and they identified it. And you can see for the um, emergency and non-emergency base rates for BLS, they're recommending a rate of $1,352 per call. Is that the right terminology, Chief, per call? Yes. Um, our current rates are $1,250 per call. In the case of the ALS emergency base rate, the ALS one rate, $2,197 is what's being recommended. Right now it's $1,650. And for the ALS two emergency base rate, right now it's $3,000, right now it's $1,850. It would go to $3,323. And our mileage and ALS intersect rates would remain the same at $38 uh, and uh, $275. So this was based on effectively the trends in the industry and updating our uh, rate structure to ensure that it's consistent with what we found. And, uh, and again, it w w you're effectively looking at the average, which is what the chief has recommended and what we're recommending to the board to approve here. And there's a motion in the packet to provide that. Um, Can I say just a Yep. If you wouldn't mind coming to the podium, Chief. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, at the podium, please. Get the folks at home can't hear you. So, uh, as Mr. Guerrero said, this was uh, advised to us by Comstar in a meeting that we had here when we were researching some of the uh, trends that were happening, happening with our billing. Um, they pointed out to us that we haven't had a rate increase in approximately eight years. We haven't raised our rates in eight years. Uh, they recommend an 8% raise, an 8% rate raise in the BLS side and a 33% rate raise on the ALS side. If all of these things add up and everything works out with our billing and our collections, we stand to increase our collections by approximately $80,000 a year. So we'd increase our collections by $80,000. So I just want to make sure that everyone knew that it's been a long time since we raised the rates. Um, I understand that we have to look out for our elderly in town, but those are covered under the Medicaid, Medicare rules. Um, and it's our billing company's recommendation on pushing the rates up. Thank you. Chief, if you don't mind, before you leave, I just a couple questions for you. Okay. So when we charge these rates, it's only when we transport to the hotel. I'm mean, to the hotel. Yeah, to the, to the hospital. <laughs> I know we do go to the hotels, but that's private. Um, no, to the hospital, correct? Correct. So when, if we go to a scene, we don't have a transport, we come back, there's no billing. There's no billing. Okay. And then the future, just your perspective, what do you think lies for the future associated with these rates? What do you see? Your perspective. Well, well I've heard many different things. I've heard everybody say that everything's going to start to get um, having a political agenda, and I haven't seen it yet, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Um, the rates are going up. There's been some um, Medicare discussions at the State House and stuff, which have been defeated, which will allow us to charge what we need to charge. There was also at one point where they were going to pay the patient, who then in turn had to pay us. Um, that's been defeated for the most part. So. I would like to say that nothing's going to change, but I don't really think that I can predict the future. Um, I haven't, in my, in my seven years of being chief, I really haven't noticed a change. Okay. Thank you. Fair enough. That's perfect. Any, uh, 
Any more discussion on this? Any board members, any questions? Okay. Take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the 2018 ambulance rates as reflected in the attached rate structure recommended by the fire chief. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chair, um, yeah. Mr. Town Administrator, uh, Mr. Prisco sign this as a chair, or do I sign as the clerk? Well, that's for the rates. For the rates. I think I do. Yes. Yes. Yes, the chairman. The chairman. Yes, the chairman. chairman. You're all set? You need this before you go? Does the chief one? Does the chief need to sign it? I can sign it. I've been signing it for the past. All right, so I don't oh. sign it. Okay. Michael, I don't sign this? Sign it, I'll send it in. Yeah. Just signed your name, Chief. <laughs> um, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. January. Next. Yes. Mr. Chairman, just Chief. something. Can I just have the motion slip? Just a small piece of paper. Yep. Thank you. And if we could just get a copy. You need a copy of that, Mike? Um, when I, when I, I think we need. In, I'll CC you. I'm just going to. I just think we need it for our open meeting documents. Oh, you need it now? We, nope. we'll need, uh, no, um, at some point. We, I, we, we can use the unsigned original. Oh, that's okay. okay. For the Good. packet, yeah, that's fine. That's normally Thanks, what Chief. we do. Okay. Yes, sir. So I just want to provide an update to the board as well. Um, so, and, and this was something as a follow-up to the recommendation from our auditor over the the summertime. Um, we collect, um, in, in it runs in a range of between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars per year on our ambulance receipts, is that roughly the, the number? And uh, it's been a couple of years since we've gone through the exercise of removing what's on the books as uncollectible or, or as otherwise uh, unpaid bills. And that amount, um, again, you're looking at uh, probably you know, over $2 million in revenue we received over that three year period, is it roughly $77,000 worth of uncollected debt that's out there that's owed to the town. Some of which, depending upon the availability of information that we have, uh, we'll be writing off, and some of which will be record reporting to third-party credit rating agencies, um, which may or may not result in payment. So I, I just note that these are not abatements which generally come to the board because of an inability to pay. These are people who have elected not to pay and are also not have not elected to request an abatement. They may, as a result of this action, request an abatement, in which case we'll do as we normally do, which is handle the, uh, confidentially the request by bringing it to the board. And that's all. Thank you. I just want the board to know we fought, we did follow up on this issue brought up by the auditor. So we should expect to see this on an agenda in the future? Uh, you may receive abatement requests as a result of th this action in, in some cases. I, I don't, you know, I, but I, I'm, not, I'm not requesting any additional um, approval by the board at this point. Okay. Thank you. All right. The next subject is discuss the trash and recycle collection program. Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, the DPW Director, Mr. Lafferty, is here, uh, as is Mr. McGrath, the Chair of the Recycling Committee. Um, there has been, uh, I think, an ongoing informal discussion relative to our uh, soon-to-expire trash and recycling collection contract. Um, they're here to basically provide us a, a brief update as to what they have found in their discussions with the market and to perhaps get some initial feedback from um, the Board as they pursue options with the market. Again, this is something that is not governed under Chapter 30B, requiring a traditional procurement process, but we have made a commitment that we're going to go to the market relative to the competition. Um, whether that goes in the, in the form of a traditional Chapter 30B bid or some other scenario, uh, we clearly have demonstrated that commitment uh, to, to, to look to the market to make sure we're getting the best offer. And then for those who don't know, we have JRM as our contractor right now. Uh, they, correct, they, they collect trash and recycling. We bring the trash to Covanta and the recycling to their facility in Peabody. So with that, I know uh, you have presented a, you've submitted a presentation. Um, I, can, I can pull it up electronically. It'll take me just a minute if you have it on a thumb drive. Mr. Laffrey, you mind coming up to the microphone? You, Mr. Or maybe to the no, McGrath? Right, right here. Nope, this one right here. Are we loading the uh, yeah, if you have it, can you load it up there? And if not, I can load it. I can load this. 
Okay. Mr. McGrath, if you wouldn't mind come sit right here at this microphone, it would be great. Sorry, I just didn't. <laughs> While um, Mr. Lafferty is pulling the information together to, to put on the presentation this evening, just a couple of things that, uh, that, uh, my, uh, that, 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 that he has conveyed to me that are going on. Um, first, uh, we have a contract with Covanta for the disposal of our trash at their Haverhill facility. And that contract was recently extended in uh, September, I believe, as a result of a multi-community effort to try to negotiate a uh, stable rate structure over the next few years. So this would not be that contract. This is the contract to actually transport the trash and the recycling to their ultimate um, ending place. Uh, there are a number of communities in the region whose contracts are uh, expiring as of June 30th, 2018, when ours does. So there's quite a bit of discussion that's happening amongst uh, individual communities. There's some consortiums of communities that have jointly procured this. So there's kind of a lot happening in the market right now. We are in a situation where um, our collection is manual, meaning that uh, it's an individual jumping off the truck, picking up the barrel and dumping it into the truck, versus some communities have moved to uh, an automated collection where there might be a bin with a cover that's collected by a, a truck uh, uh, um, robotically rather than by, um, by a person. Um, so that, that's one of the things that's out there as an option. I'm sure the board's well aware. There's a cost associated with that, both with the outfit of the equipment as well as the uh, purchasing of the toters. Um, but it is something that, that, that is out there. And so I think our, our hope here is to kind of have a, a brief discussion with the board about this and get provide you some information, get some initial feedback, and come back and have additional discussion in January. Okay. Turn it over to Mr. Lafferty. Uh, Andrew Lafferty, DPW Director. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Chairman and Board Members. Um, like the Town Administrator just mentioned, <coughs> this is kind of the 10,000 foot overview of the current trash collection. Um, I've tried to keep it very brief just to kind of give you an update or give you some some points on it and then um, and then see where the board's desire may be to, to move forward. Um, the current JRM contract expires in 2018. Um, that current contract has a total value of 575,000 which does include our solid waste and our recycling. Um, it is a one day, as you're mostly aware, it's trash is collected up on one day, Tuesday, both trash and recycling, and it's done weekly. Formally, we have a two 35-gallon barrel limit, and it's a dual stream recycling collection, which typically means the paper and cardboard is separated from the commingled uh, recycling stuff. Um, we service approximately 4,363 uh, 4, household units within the town. So in, in some dis we've had some discussions with a couple vendors um, and just other communities and, and Ed McGrath and the Recycling Committee has helped assist in kind of seeing what's going on in the marketplace. There's a variety of options out there. Um, regardless of the options, costs are increasing um, across the board. A large part of that is is due to the fact that recyclables are not worth not worth anything, so to speak, uh, as they were going back three, four, or five years ago. Currently, JRM, who is our vendor now, has built a built the credit the recycling credit into our current rate. Um, they've indicated also that moving forward, that that recycling cost will most likely be built into the next rate. There are other communities that actually have a separate recycling fee that, that goes along with their contract, um, depending on how it's negotiated. Um, our current service, as you're aware, is, is a manual trash collection and a manual recycling collection. Some of the options that are available out there um, can be a variety of things. We've looked at a couple that just, in general, what's being done in some of the other communities. Um, they're, do, they're doing manual recycling and manual collection on a five-day work uh, on a five-day collection week, and then other communities are going to automated on both the recycling and the the trash on a five-day week, or a five-day week with every other week collection for recycling. Um, there are also a variety of automated trash communities, but still that still do manual recycling. So the variety really is is 
out there for us to really pick up kind of what we want to do. One of the biggest pieces that seemed to be a, a, a stumbling block, at least initially, which one of the reasons why we want to present this to the board is our restriction right now is a Tuesday collection. And if we continue to hold that Tuesday collection only as a requirement and we go out for quotes, we're really limiting um, our options because vendors are not, are not most likely not going to not going to and not willing to put a quote in based on a Tuesday only collection. Due to the cost, they would cost them to provide trucks. They would technically, they, they would bring, be bringing in four or five trucks for, for a one day event and then have four or five trucks sitting for the next four days. Most of them do not have a, a one day open and if they do have a one day open, the only feedback we've gotten at this point would be a Friday type collection day, which we're, we're not looking to really promote. Um, in order to open up the variety and, and possibly some cost savings, we really need to look at possibly <coughs> shooting for a five-day or four-day collection week. Whatever that variety may be, it may be automated, it may still be manual, but that's really where, where a lot of the uh, vendors are looking. Andrew, if you could just take a second. Can you just explain to the board members the automated, what that means? So the automated, um, is typically so some of the communities have already gone to them they're typically the toters the large toters the they'll provide a specially specialized truck run by one person comes out can pick up the toter and dump it automatically they save by putting only one guy out in the road and it's much more efficient and faster for for them so so there's some savings there um, does that clarify yeah in five days meaning some parts of town may be a Monday, some parts may be a Tuesday, and so on. Correct. And so, on. so so most of the vendors are, are really interested in a five-day collection day. Um, so the town would be broken into five separate routes, and each day there would be a, a collection of that routes, similar to a lot of the communities in the, in the, in the area. Um, that opens up the door for a lot more vendors to be interested because they can, they can manipulate their current fleet to either take on the town or they can procure more trucks to take on the town and still still put those trucks out on the road on, on the other days. Um, the cost, so as far as the automated goes, the automated does, we do see a significant increase in cost because there is a cost associated with purchasing of the toters. Um, the initial estimate on those toters is somewhere around 550,000. Um, that would be townwide. There's a variety of different options that are available, whether it's um, purchased through the vendor or purchased separately by the town. Um, but that's one of the things to consider. In addition to that, the, um, the thing that's been brought up on numerous occasions was the current lead time it takes for that to happen. And that's a four to five month window, which is one of the reasons why we want to be in front of the board today to kind of move some of that forward before our June deadline. So we're not scrambling at the last minute trying to address that. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Andrew, just on the, on the cost, that, is it one tote per household? So that would be typically two, two totes, one for so recycling, one for trash. So it's about $500 a tote, if you get 4500 The 500000 would cover two totes per household. It's 40 yeah, we, we have less than 5,000 households here, so we're right. talking $500 a tote. That was the initial estimate. Eight. We think the numbers are a little higher than they could be, but just to kind of explain where that number is, um, it's a significant number that there isn't a direct correlation to reduction in trash to say that, you know, going automated, you're going to reduce your trash by $500,000. Just a quick even. question on the automated. If, if you go automated, you know, if someone puts something else that's not in a barrel, how does that hit? So there's a, there's a couple different options that are out there to look at. Um, the, some are pay as you throw. Some are purchasing additional toters at an at a additional cost that they, and then they can put out two toters in the, on a regular collection. If someone throws a mattress out there, or like they do now, or a chair, or something like that, and two guys just take it and throw it in the back of the truck. So, so the bulky items will be handled separately. Um, depending on how, what version we pick, it could be maybe one day a week. The bulky items go out, or one day a month, the bulky items go out, and then they would they would send out a separate truck. Okay. Uh, most of them seem to be going that way with the, the bulky items. Michael, um, 
Please. Excuse me, Andrew. Yes. Mr. Masseri wanted to ask a question. So it may have been a week or two ago, I, uh, I read in a news article that China's stopping the uh, import of uh, recyclables, which sort of says recyclable cost is going to go up rather than maybe getting money for it. We may be paying. And has any work or anyone done any looking into this in terms of <coughs> any impact that might be on our yes. future uh, water rates and uh, future trash rates? Trash rates, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, and, and actually, I'll, I'll let Ed answer that. Ed and I have had discussions about that, but he's clearly an expert on it. So, so <clears throat> the um, about to, this China sword is just the clouds getting closer. The, the storm was starting about two years ago. I work; I'm the recycling coordinator at Bedford, and we were in a similar situation. And the, they they call they call all these fancy names: sustainable recycling assessment. Um, stuff like that it's basically cost money to process what used to be the processing was done and they were getting the money on the other end marketing the material well the markets have got were going down the contamination issues and uh, in the eastern mass there's a limited we only have like four or five facilities that sort recycling and so they started charging a fee then in so in Bedford, we did, it, we did this contract two years ago. We have it capped in our contract with Republic that it's $45, $45 a ton is the most we will, we're, we will pay, we'll have to pay. Um, so that's what we've been going on. And then this year, this China soared. Basically, the government of China shut that, re, re, did not issue new licenses to import waste materials. Uh, because they felt that China was becoming the garbage dump of the world. And they have environmental concerns, and so they, they have put their contamination levels at 0.5%, and the, the material recycling recovery facilities, MRFs, technically can't make that threshold. They, they just they don't have the technology. They have to add labor to go through it because the what, what people put out for recycling, et cetera. Um, we go. I can go on. That's another whole other topic we could discuss. But staying on the money, in Bedford, July, August, and September of this fiscal year, we got a credit, a couple hundred bucks a month. October, we paid twenty-five dollars a ton for recycling. In you know, November, we paid twenty-seven dollars a ton for to process the recycling. It's still cheaper than going to Covanta, but it is is a cost. I recommended to the town when our contract was coming due two years that they should put fifty thousand dollars in the contract in the budget for a uh, for this recycling processing fee. I was being very conservative because I know towns don't have a lot of you know you can't if something sneaks up on you it's going to wreak havoc. So I was trying to be conservative, but we had it in the contract. So the most we'll pay is forty five dollars a ton, you know, on recycling. So that so basically that's what the China situation is is they've shut off the markets and everyone's scrambling. And so the last week I attended a meeting uh, representing Bedford and North Reading and two of the MRF operators were there speaking from Cassell and Waste Management and they said they're pursuing other markets but these companies know they're, they're, they're stuck. So they're not negotiating from strength and the prices not getting the prices they used to get and it's just they gotta hire more help to sort the stuff um, I'm not sure if the, the, the MRF is a sorting facility in, in elementary where the, 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 the truck comes in, you might have seen it at JRM in Route 1. They come in, they drop, empty the truck on the floor, a front end loader takes a scoop, puts it up, it goes up on a conveyor belt. In the first stretch of the conveyor belt are workers grabbing stuff, hangers, plastic bags, cords, stuff that doesn't go, go in the it, it shouldn't be there. And they, they, now they've had to add more help to there, and then it goes through the machinery. I don't understand all the science, but they wind up sorting it by material, and it takes about 10 minutes to go through the line. 
and if there has to, they'll put the line through again. But it's all that, all that extra labor now, and they're, these two gentlemen that spoke last week are saying they're going to have to invest in new equipment to try to meet the China standards. So it's going to be an increase in costs. So I, I told Mr. Lafferty when he, we were discussing this earlier this year, this is something you need to be cognizant of. And like, so. so basically then we've got transportation cost is going up. Yep. Recycling cost is going up both for regular trash and recycling. Yeah, we, so just in talking to, to the vendors, um, if things stay the same, we, we would expect to see a 25 to 30% increase just from what we're paying today um, on without changing the service at all. So that would include the disposal of trash and... Right. Trash, and trash and recycling. Recycling. Yeah, the can collection I, of trash I, and recycling. Can I interject? And the other, other thing, like we, ha we have Covanta. The other issue that's going on in a macroeconomic level is the outlets for materials are shrinking. So co the fact Covanta has limited capacity, the state's limited their capacity, and these MRFs have limited capacity too that the state's allowing them to do. And the, basically, the spot market is disappearing. That these these facilities can only take the company, the towns, and companies that they've got a contract with. So the company, the guys who are trying to play the market and sneak a load in here, they're getting shut out. And so you, we really want to secure an outlet for this material. The Covanta being and having the contract for Covanta is the, is the example. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, Mr. McGrath, that kind of ties into my question. I know a few weeks back there was a problem with JRM trucks basically being stuck at Covanta because yep. Covanta was backed up. They were probably maybe biting more than they could chew and taking on too much volume. If we're looking to put this out for bid, is there an advantage on the Covanta side with going with one carrier or another? Or does it not, not come into play? Covanta's our, we're the vendor, we're the client of Covanta. Right. So, that's a separate contract, but yeah. is there any, so JRM, whether we go with them or the next guy, has nothing to do with Covanta. Uh, you know, I, I feel clear. the same thing with Bedford with Republic, but as Andrew, we, the plant manager, you know, they're trying to get priority to the municipalities that are um, under contract, and they're trying to work through this. They've got issues, they've had issues with, with drivers pulling guns, fist fights, because someone thinks they're cutting the line, and it could be a North Reading load being brought in, and the guy's been waiting there for three hours, Blows a, blows, a, you know, blows a stack and starts trouble, so. And I want to make it clear to the public, the delays that we did have were not JRM related. <coughs> right. If that's right. important. Okay. So, so just a couple of factors to consider, and, and we've already we've probably hit on most of these already, but just wanted to quickly reiterate. Um, the, the current one-day collection uh, restricts vendors being interested in quoting um, any, any services in North Reading. Um, they're not as inclined or, or able to take on a Tuesday because of their current fleet schedules um, or a one-day collection in general. Um, the credits are no longer being received for recyclables. Right now, because we, our credit is technically built into our cost, we don't, we're not seeing the change like, like Bedford does. Um, but Moving forward, we're going to see whether it's built into the, the overall cost or whether it's a separate fee. We're, we're not going to be seeing the credits we've gotten in the past. Um, one of the things that's been brought up is the, the town, one of the things we need to look at considering is the, the fee for um, disposal of CRTs. Currently, there is no fee for a resident to dispose of CRTs, but the town is paying, paying that. We're one of the only towns in the whole area. Um, that do that, which means we're probably getting rid of a lot of CRTs from other communities that are making their way to North Reading, and we're, we're, we're seeing those costs. Um, and as we had mentioned earlier, the bulk waste would most likely need to go to a separate truck collection, whether it's a one day a week or one day a month, there would probably be a different type of collection for, for the bulk waste. Um, some of the differences between the automated and the manual, and, and you know, these are some of the questions I've been asking both the vendors, other communities, speaking with Ed, um, and it kind of been indicated in the past, it, yeah, 
earlier was um, there's not necessarily a correlation to say, you know, if we spend X amount of dollars on going automated, including buying the toters, that we're going to get that back on savings in, in, in disposal or in collection. Um, it will possibly reduce the cost to reduction. It, it will possibly reduce the, reduce the solid waste costs um, and increase the recycling. But um, whether we see a $500,000 increase, it would be, be hard-pressed to see that. I did request from some of the vendors to just see what the impacts have been in other communities that have gone from manual to automated to see what the rate of recycling have has the rate of recycling increased to a significant level to make some benefits there. So I'm still waiting on some of that data. Um, the automated is, is much easier for residents to, to use. It's everything goes in one toter. Obviously the toters are very very simple to carry out to the or bring out to the streets as compared to the little 18 gallon buckets that tend to blow all over the place. Um, you know, we tend to have less trash blown on the streets. There are potential opportunities for DEP grants going to the automated system. Um, no guarantee on any of those grants, but there are some, some opportunities to maybe recover some of those costs. Um, we would expect to see some reduced cost in the service due to the, the vendor being able to put one man on instead of a two-man crew for a manual collection. But um, that's remains to be seen on what, what comes out of the quotes when we put that forward. Um, so kind of the reason we wanted to bring this to the board was to get some feedback on you know what the desire is and which direction we want to, the town would like to see us go. Um, the, si the significant changes that we need to consider will be changing from the one day to the five day collection. Now that's really the one that opens up the door for a lot more opportunities. Um, and then to get some feeling whether there's a, a desire to go to an automated or a manual, stay manual or go to an automated type collection and then see what type of um, feeling there is towards implementing some fees for CRT collection. Mr. Masseri. Pending any your questions. So Andrew, another thing I think needs to be taken into <coughs> consideration in any changes that are going to be made, whether it's automatic or manual. Is, uh, Mr. Masseri, if I could ask you a favor, if you could just speak into the microphone. Yeah, oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, whether it's going to be uh, uh, manual or automatic is the seniors that have very, very low amounts of trash basically, and currently based on the current system, are uh, paying the same amount as everybody else. And as the rates, and they appear the rates are going to go up, there's going to be a lot of feedback from <coughs> that community. And as you well know from uh, uh, the Masiri household when the barrel didn't get picked up, there's one kitchen basket each, uh, kitchen bag in the barrel each week, all right, and the rest is uh, pick up. So uh, now we're going to have a bigger barrel for most people if we're going to the automatic. And is there a way to maybe come up with a system that uh, could maybe have two tiers for people that have one barrel versus two or something to offset that cost. And I'm not talking for myself, really. Uh, uh, you know, I, I can afford it, but there are a lot of people in town that can't. Right. Um, I'm not aware of any specific programs. I'm not sure if Ed has that, that I, has. I've been looking into that. Uh, I hear this similar, what goes on, you know, I see carts, we, in Bedford, we have a 48 gallon cart for trash, and if residents need more, they, there's overflow bags that they pay for at the stores, or they can purchase, they can, it's not a purchase, but pay the fee for an additional trash cart, and they get billed on an annual basis. Um, in the recite, we, we're very similar to what we're, what we're doing now is the same as North Reading's doing as far as recycling. It's almost an apples to apples comparison. Um, but they, they get to an issue, you start doing multiple size carts. Now you gotta have parts for those carts too. You have, there's a storage issue. Um, people move, carts disappear, you know, and stuff. And um, 
it's it's a question that is constantly how do you how do you treat certain segments of the market, and seniors being one is and they don't want a bigger car. What I'm hearing, they want because they don't fill them, and a lot of people it's too big and they physically have difficulties moving the the carts even at 48 gallon, moving it to the end of their driveway each week. It's it's a challenge. So. Um, I mean, it's something we could, you know, I'm looking for it from, from where I'm standing. And North Reading benefits, so when I'm doing research for Bedford, I'm kind of, you know, I share it with Andrew, this is what I got. So I, I understand, sensitive to your question, Mr. Masseri, I just don't have an answer for you tonight. I wasn't necessarily looking for an answer yeah. tonight. I was just suggesting that as part of right. what he's currently doing yeah. is that that you know, yep. will be an issue and that maybe it's worth looking at options there. Yep. So. Mr. O'Leary. I've seen some of these other um, totes that the automated system have. They're heavy. They're big. Um, and I also see them um, lingering longer roadside because they're big and they're heavy. People tend to leave them out so a little bit more unsightly in the neighborhoods too. Then again, I, I tend to see it more in the urban areas, more urban than, than suburban, but still in those communities that have them, because they're so heavy, and again, for those people who are, uh, you know, limiting their physical capacity to haul these things around, it makes it difficult, more difficult. Right. Um, and again, I don't know, I haven't seen any real smaller ones. I just see these, well, 90 gallons. Is so, so most of the vendors are, are um, at least mentioning a 90 gallon recycle bin which is similar to the ones if you've seen them in the, the town hall here or some of the other uh, municipal buildings they're, they're definitely the, the bigger ones oh, excuse me but I was thinking of the other the regular trash though that's the 90 was the recycle but the uh, the uh, so the, 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 the other ones are 60 gallons 60 60 correct. gallons which is still significant in size and weight right. and again the way that they're built so that the robotics can handle it and whack right. it and empty it it's it's got to be pretty heavy it is very they're very heavy and they weigh uh, less than 10 pounds. What's that? They weigh less than 10 pounds. I don't know the exact weight the off wheels. the top of my head. They're all wheels, aren't Yeah, they got wheel. The, the wheels, you just tip them. And the wheel, they're not, you don't pick them up. People would not be picking them up. Boy, some of the ones I've seen. Well, and, and that's part of the reason why the automated system is that the trash companies will not be picking them up physically either because for that exact reason also. They want it. They would prefer to go automated with those. And if it's not automated and it stays manual, then they don't want to use 60 and 90 gallon toters because they'll yeah, blow up their wait. personnel, so to speak. So I just want to. I have a couple questions for you. So we did a survey several years ago when we were originally allowed people to have four barrels, and then we were able to get down to two. And I know there was a lot of heartache on it, but I believe if I have the numbers correct. 95% of the town had two barrels or less, we found. But we were paying for four. 92% had two barrels or less. There was about 4% had three, and the rest was four or more, and that totaled 195 households. So, you know, I think that data is still valuable. I can't imagine it's changed much yeah. uh, in the, over these last several years. And I think we have a reality here that we have to face, right? What, how we do trash today won't be how we do trash in the near future. Uh, and I think we have to go back and look at that data. And I think um, you know, Mr. Masseri hits upon a, a very s important point that I think needs to go back to the vendors. You know, if we can have a 90-gallon barrel for recycling and we can have a 60-gallon barrel for trash, then why can't we have a 32-gallon for seniors as well? Um, you know, if that's how they're charging us, right? I mean, there's got to be a way to find a solution for seniors, not only here in our, our community, but throughout the Commonwealth. I mean, there, it doesn't make sense that, the, that they get hurt. But you, you need to, there's a correlation here, and you don't start these options that Mr. Lafferty showed you. The 96 gallon cart for recycling is for an every other week collection. So that's one question we need an answer. Do you want to stay weekly recycling? or are you willing to go every other week? And that's one of the variables. If you go weekly recycling, you can go down to a 64 or 72 gallon cart. Unless, you know, you're not gonna need that big cart that you see in the town buildings. So what's the difference though in price? Is there a 5% uh, reduction, 30% no, reduction? I wanna I mean, say, I have to look at numbers in North, in Rep, 
in Bedford, but I think there was the selectmen chose to stay weekly, and it cost an initial seventy-five grand. FinCom over there wasn't happy; they were questioning that. But Mrs. Minupelli. I just, I mean, I just think we need a little bit more information. Yep, yep. And then I also think we shouldn't be catering to vendors. V vendors want the contract with us and should be catering to what we would like. But let's explore the options and the pr different pricing for the options. Me personally, just from this small discussion, which we've just began, I would be absolutely opposed to ha making people go and buy trash bags at the store pick up the trash we all pay a trash fee yep. pick up the trash every week let's keep the community clean that's my personal perspective here I haven't heard enough to see what the cost differential is but I think I think Selectman Mosseri makes a fantastic point that um, if we can maybe have a separate barrel for people that only that don't generate as much yeah, yeah. trash as a family of six and I do think the numbers are different now because we have a lot of families uh, that's expanded now. So I don't know how old that data is. That we'll, I do recall the time frame when we went from four to two. Um, and that's manageable for larger families that live in the community. And there are a lot of us. Well, that was based on two barrels at 55 gallons? 35. 35 gallons. Mm -hmm. So if we, w I think we have an opportunity to gain some savings if we go to a one barrel, but it's a larger, but we, it would be a lot user friendly if we could find a solution for our seniors right not to go such a large barrel. but I the, the yeah. question we're I think we're I suggested to Andrew if you don't mind me speaking is, is what is your feel do you want us to keep weekly recycling do you want to go every other week recycling do we know just, that I don't have an answer now yeah. but this is what right this is what right. that'll play into what numbers right. that we can present to you but wouldn't a vendor wouldn't you put you'd those options you're, to you're, a vendor are, and you, say these haulers what? don't you're thinking these haulers don't act like that. The trash industry is not. So, you what's your survey say? Didn't, was that what, was that part of the survey? What's that? The old survey we did. I'll dig up the. I still have it. I'll dig it up. I think there's a lot of great information in that survey yeah. that will help us answer some yeah, of these questions. I can do it by neighborhoods. What, and you can what I'd like to do for the yeah, sake of time idea. is to get you back here in front of us and really start exploring the options. And between now and then, though, I think you need to do some homework. And sort of collect what these options are, you know, options A, B, C, and D, and you know, try to give us a range. I know you can't give us a yeah, matter yeah. of fact, but we need to understand if we go to a, every other week, what does that really mean? Is it really seventy-five thousand, or is it two hundred thousand, right. or is it you know ten thousand? Because I'll tell you what, I'll spend the ten grand to have it every week, but you know, that's and that, me. and that's what I, I, I said to Miss Lafferty. We need. I didn't I didn't get this type of guidance in Bedford and. I spent a lot of nights in executive session over the course of three months discussing this. So, yeah. you know, I just thought, let's get some information from the, what's the board's, where, you know, what your feeling is. Mrs. Minipelli. I have a quick question. Do you know any other communities that do do an every other week pickup? Yeah, that information's available. I have some information. Um, if you can get yeah. a list to me of what, do, do we still, um, Mr. Gilberto, do we still have towns that we benchmark? We used to do some, we benchmark certain communities. Uh, we do them mostly for personnel matters, yes. Okay. Uh, they usually are a similar population. Yeah, so if you give me a list of, you give me a, get to, Andrew has my email. If you give me the list of company, the towns, I can pull, there's a DP database I can pull that out of and provide that information of what communities, our population are serving the 4,500 households. This is what other towns are doing. And so, what do you, would I'll you let. also be able to maybe sh demonstrate from a comparison? I mean, because that's public, the contract amounts, what the price the, difference the, would be. Like, I'll have to do some if, scrambling if on that. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a real database where you, you got to go digging mm. for that stuff. Maybe yeah, there. How many communities, there. I mean, there seems to be a lot in our consortium or area now that are coming up at the same time. How many have been subjected to the market changes Everybody. so far? Or is it yeah. relatively new and very few communities of... Everybody. Into the everybody. Everybody yeah. now. I mean, yeah. is he's getting into it? But I'm just wondering: Are we at the front end of it, or the middle, so or the back end of it? Or you're kind of in the middle, I would say. It started two years ago. Okay. Um, I mean, to give you an idea of how what I'm, I'm not trying to scare you, but Fall River, Casella Waste Systems told Fall River, "We don't want you recycling anymore. There's too much trash in it." Turned them away. It was costing them $108 a ton, 
and now they're shipping their recycling to Connecticut. So these companies are, you know, the publicly traded companies, Waste Management, Republic, Casella, they're, they're in to make money. They're, you know, they have official fiduciary responsibilities. And so when they, they'll just shut you off if you get too much stuff. Oh, that was a point I had written down here, that kind of going off what Mr. Mignopelli was saying. You know, we're the ones that are the customer, but the problem is they have all the control now. It's starting to see a lot more monopolies out there in this industry where we really don't have any leverage. We're almost at their mercy, mm -hmm. so we need to really do a good job collecting the data, data, sifting through it, using our survey results, and we need to communicate with the public. Yep. We need to share every step of the way yep. what's going on because we should not be throwing this down their throats. They need to feel and understand the pain that we're dealing with here. Uh, this isn't something we want to do, and, right? And this is something that's coming up as enforcement. And it's across this, the whole nation. Mm -hmm. This is not just localized, this is a na national issue, and but we have to communicate and we have to really, you guys, it's really on you to collect this information. Look at it, when you get it, bring us options, you really need to show us where the savings are. And, and we have to do it this time with seniors in mind. And we have to find, if some other vendor out there has to deal with this issue somewhere and throw the nation, it has to be. We can't, it can't be unique to North Reading. So whatever solution is, we need to think about that. Mr. It, it, Mr. Just if we go to a, a five-day system, uh, we had some issues in the past where we were concerned about the vendors coming in with half-loaded trucks from other communities, and we were getting yeah. tagged with the bill. Yeah. What is that, from an administrative standpoint, going to do? I mean, So as of right now, we inspect all the trash trucks when they roll into town in the morning, and when they when they have trash on board, we it's deducted off their off their bill. So we're we're already addressing that. We would obviously have to do it every day. I don't see that as a, a as a significant issue. It's not okay. Um, I just we're, so we inspect four to five trucks on Tuesday morning. Essentially, we don't we don't do the recycling trucks because there's there's no cost there for us one way or another. Um, so although there will be now. There appears to be. It moving, moving forward, depending on however we go, we would still expect the uh, inspection to continue. Yeah. It, it, just in relation to recycling, I mean, you drive around town, there are a lot of people who are extremely conscientious where the recycling actually is more than mm -hmm. trash. the trash. Right. You know, so if we're talking about considering a you know, bi-weekly, um, I don't know if it these, works. And these, you know, I don't know if it works. These, yeah, yeah. Uh, for a lot of people, again, I get my mine's almost recycling. Mine's probably at least 50 50, maybe yeah. a little more towards the recycling, just because, again, we don't, there's only two of us at home now, so don't generate a lot of trash, but a lot of recycling. So it's, uh, um, you know, and then in relation to Mr. Masseri's point regarding the senior citizens or even smaller households, you know, we have a fee now of $256 a year, which some Four. people. Uh, Okay. 56 a quarter. 56 a quarter. 56 a quarter. Uh, that's some people complain about because they only put, you know, one trash bag out. Um, if we get into something like this and you're talking about a $150,000 increase, 30% over right. you know, half a million dollars, um, th there needs to be a way to, to split that a little more fairly so that the big, bigger users a little more and, I, and again I don't know if there's any formulas or what other communities do uh, and I don't want to go back to stickers no you know but with this technology know, Mr. Mr. was here for the stickers I don't think you, you were here for the stickers the sticker program Mr. McGrath was here for the, the sticker advancement program. Of the, these technologies and these trucks when they lift it they they should be able to pull a weight on each one of them that's and money you want to do that that's more money is it really yep because I our, should, put our, our my family should pay more than my neighbor next door who only puts out one. Now you got technology. There's, there's, you can put a chip on the on the container, and the thing goes up, and the truck reads the chip, and they, you know, you get all this data. Then you got to manage all the <coughs> data. That's that. That's available. There's towns, cities, and towns across the country that do that, but that's enough. That costs additional money. Okay. You know? So. Mr. Schultz will be putting it in his neighbor's <laughs> bucket over there. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so how soon, Mr. Goldborough, should we readdress this? Wait, which uh, I would suggest either January 8th or January 22nd, depending upon the progress. Probably the 22nd. And really, thank you guys, and especially Mr. McGrath, uh, in an unpaid position and 
uh, Thank you for being the bearer of bad news. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But he, he's been, you know, we wouldn't have our program where it is today without the volunteerism on your part. And so thank you. Thank you. I got a team by one quick, Mr. Chair. Mr. McGrath, a question I get once a week from constituents. Can you please tell the public how they should recycle right now? Okay. So I tell, it used to be dual stream, sort your paper and your cardboard and keep your bottles, cans, and um, separate from everything. Um, I tell people now, keep doing what works in your house. Hey, just so get it all to the wait, end of the let, curve. Let me just clarify that so we don't put the wrong message out. Um, our current contract is dual stream recycling with JRM. JRM's made the statement that they will not pass up someone's recycling on curbside if it is commingled, quote unquote, single stream. So they will still pick it up. But currently, our, our agreement is a dual stream agreement. I they think some of their but trucks. They will always have their are trucks, dual stream trucks. That's what people Correct. Say. And, and there are times when the trucks will throw all the the dual stream or the single stream into one one hopper and there are times when they'll separate it yeah. um, they own the recycle facility they're the ones that manage all the recycling so that's really on their end how they want to recycle it yeah. the concern we have is we want to make sure that they're not they're not leaving it <coughs> curbside and expecting the resident to to do one one week and one the next week and, and so far we've had no complaints that they pass it up because of that we do get complaints that they pass it up because of contamination and that's that's the big problem right now is plastic bags seem to be the biggest issue um, and we will probably st we'll start seeing issues with that because they're going to have to start tagging them because they have to turn them away um, if, if people continue to put plastic bags in them. Yeah. Redding what, does that, Redding does that right now. plastic bag, like a white? Any plastic bag. Anything. Any, any plastic bag. Grocery bag. Any grocery bag does not matter. Yep, plastic grocery bag. Any, the any plastic bag. Bags. The wraps of Polar Spring case case of water. Those plastic wraps. Mm -hmm. yep. Anything like that. It's called film in the industry. Plastic film. In red in Reading now, JRM. If your recycling is in a plastic bag, they tag it and leave it on your front yard. Really? They don't take it. Wow. And that's one of the that's that's the that and trash in the recycling are the two one and two issues with recycling that's causing the problems so you know um, so i tell people to mr schultz's recite dual stream separate it right now because it's changing i don't know what it's going to be like when next summer if they're, how they're going to get stricter or whatever but if you think about it you know they talk about amazon or the old the old last mile right to the doorstep well flip that around that amazon box that you got delivered today with a christmas gift you are the first mile of somebody else's supply chain. You know, that box is got somebody's raw material. Yes. Yes. So putting your broken down boxes into a trash bag would be wrong. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. I'm going to go putting you into the plastic <laughs> trash bin would be right. Yes. No, pla no plastic bags. Because what happens is, think of it's a conveyor belt. It's a, it goes up this conveyor. They sort through it. They grab what they can. Though, then they got, it's like wheels and hooks and stuff that's sorting the stuff. Those bags get caught in the hooks. They have to shut the plant down and the workers have to climb up the conveyor belts with knives and cut all the plastic. The anything tank, VCR tapes, trash. Nothing, not recyclable. Okay. Anything like that, go through a hole. Well, we're still going to have to do some workshops as we start to really narrow down what we're going to do. We're going to have to have multiple workshops where people come out and get educated on what we yep. decide. Yep. Communication is king in this. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, Merry Christmas to the both of you. Christmas. And happy holidays. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Next one is to review the additional community compact proposal. Go. Yes, sir. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so in addition to the request for uh, uh, a community compact for a commuter park and ride um, location. Uh, I've had some discussion with the superintendent of schools about the potential for submitting an application for a uh, evaluation of the management and maintenance of town and school department facilities. And the goal in this would not necessarily be to look to uh, reduce costs or reduce personnel, but rather to identify options that might allow us to operate more efficiently, um, to integrate um, management systems in all of our buildings, to utilize existing resources uh, within all of the town's departments, 
uh, or potentially to move all of our buildings to a similar maintenance schedule. And so uh, I've had some discussion with the superintendent uh, along with the town planner as well and we intend to, uh, we would like authorization to ask the state to consider funding this as something we could look at. Again, I, I can't stress enough, but we don't go into this necessarily looking to um, eliminate jobs or uh, to make uh, significant uh, changes to the way we deliver the services, but we're looking to try to optimize what we do um, using our resources and identify areas where we maybe we need additional resources. And it's kind of built on the commitment that we have made to our town facilities, which are aging on our end. It's kind of hand in hand with the effort that we'll be doing for a facilities master plan for all the town buildings. And I think it's also a reflection of the reality of uh, the sophistication that is in um, the newer school buildings, namely the middle and high school. So we felt that this was an opportunity to try to evaluate an option. I believe the superintendent was going to be having some discussion with the school committee tonight, but I can't confirm that fact. Uh, but prior to submitting the authorization, uh, we wanted to review this with a selectman and seek your approval. And I believe we have a motion accordingly. Any discussion, questions? <coughs> I'm a big fan of the community compacts. I mean, we, we've met with the lieutenant governor on this subject a few times, and mm -hmm. uh, they continue to keep issuing them, and I think we should continue to take the opportunity to take advantage of these best practices. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be a lot of grant funding out there that uh, could benefit us as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of the idea. So if we don't have any more questions, I'll take a motion. Uh, this is number, number 11, Mr. Tom Administrator. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the filing of application number two with the Commonwealth Community Compact Program for commuter park and ride facilities management slash maintenance. A motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. I asked the town administrator to put on the agenda this evening is uh, just to do a quick review a year in review for 2017. It was a busy year. It seems to fly by, fly by faster and faster every year. And I'd like to try to do this every year around this time if we can, because I think it's helpful for us to reflect on what all the work that we've done as a community, but to also help us prepare for our annual report uh, to help allows the town administrator to have a good summary of uh, just a list of the things that we've accomplished and we've have ahead of us those challenges so we put together this quick little slide uh, I don't know if you have it there or not we, we have it fortunately it's on this computer not on this slide mr. chairman perhaps we could go to the next agenda item uh, sure. 12 relative to Comcast yep I believe mr. Yes, Larry sir. mr. Missouri can provide Perfect. an update yeah, we can give you a quick update Go ahead, Mr. Uh, there's a draft. Yeah, there's a draft proposal that's in the hands of town council as of today uh, from Comcast. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, had a flurry of uh, activity, um, discussions with uh, Comcast. We believe that we have come to uh, an agreement, a tentative agreement at this point. Uh, to town council and their council, our representative is uh, are working out the details in the language. Uh, so we haven't seen that yet. Uh, so it's anticipated that we'll have the um, Cable Advisory Committee coming before us at our next meeting, first meeting in January, um, to make a presentation and make a recommendation uh, in relation to the, the proposal. So um, we made some progress over the last couple of weeks. I believe we've come to pretty close to a conclusion, and we hope that uh, the board will be supportive of uh, terms and conditions that have been offered so I think it was January what's that next meeting? Yeah. the the eighth the eighth so January 8th um, we expect there'll be an agenda item uh, mr. Masseri so as a follow-on to that uh, you know one of the major issues is we got to the point of re uh, discussing a new contract with Comcast was that they out of the blue and it not necessarily unexpected told us that we can't use the INET for data trans <laughs> two members of the uh, cable committee uh, did get preliminary numbers from our from Matt associated with replacing the INET and uh, you know there's been a lot of work done associated with looking at what has to be done talking to a vendor that's on the state list to get some numbers the numbers growing by the way and uh, 
today we had a meeting uh, this morning over at the school with uh, school personnel associated with information technology uh, to make sure that we're one is they we're not really in the loop here early on and as they discovered there was going to be an issue obviously it impacts them in both uh, data and also in uh, broadcasting from the various schools etc so I thought it was an effective meeting today in terms of getting it all out. There's potential for uh, some state grants for the school side of it, which may help overall, uh, because this is uh, the INET uh, is used by both organizations, and uh, it uh, is uh, uh, something that uh, uh, we're all going to share. And uh, only fair that if the school can raise some uh, grants associated with it to help fund the entire program. We also did discuss, uh, Matt did kind of cover what the cost would be to eliminate the, uh, the INET altogether and uh, use VPN tunnels. And, you know, over time that's much more costly. So it seems we we're on the path for the INET. Uh, they're going to work, uh, the, the technology group is going to work closely together to uh, work out the details. And we planned another meeting. February 2nd? Or I, I don't the know the sixth, sixth, two days after the Super Bowl. Yes, that's right. Okay. Nice. Yes. So yes. there'll be another uh, day after the management level <laughs> meeting. Uh, parade day? To, uh, parade day. <laughs> parade. <laughs> parade day. To review that, and hopefully at that point, uh, any adjustments to the uh, capital plan will be uh, available sometime in that so time frame. The money that's generated from Verizon and Comcast, those funds that comes to NORCAM, can't be used for this kind of expense? No. No. In fact, the money that uh, Comcast in the agreement, I won't even say what the number is yet until we're ready to sure. sign off on the agreement. Is not coming from the fees that are applied to the citizens. It's of not coming from the subscribers. It's, it's going to come directly coming. from home base, <laughs> Comcast themselves. Okay. So uh, on on a bright side, the uh, consultant, uh, uh, the Ken? Kevin, 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 uh, from Reading, right, uh, who has helped us with Munis and uh, still consults with us has gone through it already in the town of Reading. Okay. So he was at the meeting today too. That's so great. we're getting at least some input from, uh, you know, a technical individual that's gone through it uh, for that's another big. community. Yeah, they built their own just recently, so great. Well, good. thank you for the time and effort you guys have put into this. And I know you, you've talked about the last two weeks, but it's been a lot longer than this. Oh, it's been you've been longer than that. So. And then, by the way, we're just going to pick yep. up and start with Verizon. Start with Verizon shortly. Right, so. Show. So get a, get a good rest over the uh, holiday <laughs> break, okay? All right, anything else? Now we got the presentation up, and, uh, and what I would like the board to do is if we go through it, there's probably things we missed, and this is the opportunity we'd love to get your input. Again, this was just something Michael and I put together, uh, just more to get the discussion going, but if there's things that we missed, we want to capture it tonight so we can have this as a good outline for our uh, annual report. Mr. Chairman, we could also place it in the Dropbox folder for the meeting tonight if members yep. wanted to review it and comment back at a later time yep. in the interest of time. So, oh, and I see that the, the font is fantastic this evening. <laughs> you can't read it. <laughs> Maybe so, you can just read it. Yeah, I'll do my best to read it. I, I do apologize. I'm going to go up there because I can read it a little better. Yeah, don't ask me. I can't even see it from here. So just going through quickly, uh, starting with the month of January, two new department heads joined us. Um, our HR director, Mr. Collins, is here this evening, and a little bit later in the uh, year, the IT director, Matt Cooper. February, the town considered and then declined a medical marijuana dispensary proposal. We know that's something that's come up, but there was quite a bit of time that went into that, um, and some feedback from the community as well on a couple of occasions. In March, we had a special town meeting to rezone 102 and 104 Lowell Road and voted at town meeting to prohibit recreational marijuana sales in North Reading. In that same month, the board signed a purchase and sale agreement with Pulte Homes. Uh, in April, the uh, board executed a new uh, contract with the town administrator. The board elected to change health care providers from Harvard to Blue Cross Blue Shield and also implemented a new 
creative approach for controlling health care by signing a contract for a participating funding arrangement, which is the partially self-funded health insurance model that we are in, uh, in that is in effect this year. Uh, in May, uh, Mr. Schultz elected to the board. Town voted to prohibit recreational uh, marijuana at the ballot. The town signed on with the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority for the Ring and Ride program. In June, town approved funding uh, at town meeting to build a permanent bathroom and concession stand at Arthur Kenny Field. In August, the town applied for a $3 million water infrastructure grant from the state Mass Works grant program. In September, concluded negotiations with Andover for an IMA extension to allow us more time to consider the MWRA or Andover for water and wastewater options. And the board also updated its strategic plan with a priority focus on town facilities and, and resources. October, we had town meeting, approved funding to further evaluate the Andover MWRA options and approve the social host bylaw, which is awaiting formal approval from the Attorney General's office. November, Chief Warnock announced his retirement effective January 21st next year. December, town completes the cash sale for 104 Lowell Road for $30 million to pull day homes town net pro proceeds in excess of $20 million. And the town has concluded its negotiations with Comcast for a local franchise agreement to offer cable television services this evening, we didn't want to be presumptive. We also settled two collective bargaining agreements, as the board indicated. And we didn't know that there were two others that were settled earlier this year, the library and the um, uh, North Reading administrative staff. So I want to thank the chairman who put virtually all the time and effort into putting this together. I just kind of put it on this thing and moved the order around a little bit. Um, we welcome your feedback now or after the fact uh, as well as we go forward. Uh, we generally have the report finalized, I believe, in February, maybe March, early March, when we give it to Karen in my office who gives it to the publisher. So, but at the end lot, of the a lot the, going on and a lot accomplished for sure. At the end of the evening during the uh, board comments, I was going to bring this up, but I'm going to take the opportunity now. And you, you can see we went through it in a few minutes, but I know there was a lot of your personal time in the evenings and all these committees, and I don't think the town folks, um, <coughs> not by not on purpose, can rec recognize the amount of time that we spend outside of this room and going to our liaison meeting responsibilities and our committees that we're part of and the subcommittees and ad hoc committees that we're part of and this is the results and you know, there's a lot up there that we've accomplished and a lot of work behind it hours and hours and the town administrator your staff needs to be commended because all those things everything that we do behind the scenes you guys bring you know get the ball over the goal line and then you get it executed uh, flawlessly with your team so a lot of Thanks has to go to them. Absolutely. And much uh, big kudos to them. So uh, your input is welcome. And we can go through it now, or you want to later on, like the town minister said, you know, send us an email. And we'd like to try to capture it as we start to outline the annual report, and the town will start to see those come out. When do those come out? And sometime. And they get uh, published uh, that late spring, I believe. Late spring. Early to late spring. But we have to do the work now, so I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. So I'll open it up to the board. Karen will keep after you, Michael. Well, I think this is a good way to at least yeah, get right. an outline done. Yeah. It's a busy year. Wow. It's a busy year. Yeah. And we have an equally busy year ahead of us. So, mm -hmm. uh, But getting the collective bargaining agreements done, I, I didn't put them up there on purpose because I wasn't sure how things were going to go this evening. But getting that completed, but also starting to prepare our strategy for the next time. Uh, we talked a lot about that executive session so I won't get into it in detail but we need to prepare for the next round and you know, sustainability is the key so, anything else you want to add or would you like to take the opportunity later on but if you look at it though I mean there are an awful lot of uh, it, there's, there's an awful lot of work and time and effort that gets put in just on a regular basis dealing with what is normally our responsibilities but if you look at some of these issues these are issues that you know, kind of get thrust in front of us or opportunities that present themselves, which take an inordinate amount of time and human resources from our, our staff uh, to take advantage of. And uh, one thing that's uh, noticeable is, is that there have been more opportunities for grant monies and uh, a lot of time and energy put in. Again, there's still a lot of stuff yeah. in the works. I mean, this is, these are things that have been finalized. But if you were to add, the things that are in the in the works right now, um, mm. the list would double. Oh yeah, that would be. You know, so it's uh, um, 
So this is a nice recap in relation to maybe accomplishments or things that have been finalized, but truly what's uh, some of the things that are going on and that we know are coming. I mean, even the discussion we just had about the trash. Uh, we know that it's an issue globally here, or, but it comes right down to the local level. And the time that's going to have to be spent yep. to deal with that issue and come to some conclusion as to how are we going to address it, it's going to take a lot of time and effort. And, uh, but there's a lot of volunteerism behind this. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. That I do think we miss every once in a while. Even these committees, uh, yeah. the CPC members who are elected officials, but we also have a ZBA that are appointed. And we have Hillview commissioners and on and on and on. I mean, a lot of these people out there that aren't here this evening that, you know, we could spend all night trying to recognize them by name. Really, their efforts are behind a lot of these bullets. So I just don't want that to get lost in the noise. But the other thing that I, when I finished doing this, I sat back and looked at it, I said, you know, I've been here almost eight years now. And when I see the way we operate today versus what we did eight years ago, it, may, it was no fault to anyone, but I think we're more proactive planning ahead and actively working things where when I first got around here, we seem to be very reactive management. And we're not no longer just, re I mean, we have to every day something comes up, we have to react to it. But I think you see less and less of that. You see good planning, long-term planning, like the trash. We're bringing it up early. We're going to vet it. We're going to communicate. I think we communicate way better than we ever have. And so a, a testimony to the town administrator because it really falls under your leadership. Um, the whole communication piece, you have brought us to a whole new level. And it's important, and we see <coughs> positive effect from it. Anything else? So yeah, we'll make sure the board gets this, but thank you. Okay. Uh, out the Kenny Field, restrooms and concessions. I assume Mr. O'Leary, you want yeah, to the town administrator? They're just looking for a little more money because they're progressing <laughs> again. <laughs> That, that's correct. This is simply payment of requisitions under the existing contract. The agenda did have a, an area for potential action on change orders. We do not have a change order to report to the board at this point in time. This is purely payments in, a, in, a cur in accordance with the existing contract. Okay, so the, we're not going to do the um, change order? Correct. There, there is no change order. There is no, there just is two, no change two requisitions to be paid. Great. And there are two motions, I believe. Or one, maybe one motion. And Mr. Chairman, I move to approve payment requisition number two in the amount of $55,530.35 to Construction Dynamics, Inc. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? The progress looks like it's pretty much on schedule. It's Looking on good. on schedule that time. We haven't heard Nice otherwise. clean operation down there. Yep. Great. They were down there today. So no, uh, today. No, any, uh, no, no discussion, no questions? When do, when do you think it'll be? When, when do you think it'll be? Has to be done by March fifteenth. Okay. Has to be done by St. Patrick's Day, according to the contract. But yeah. really, it's just It'll probably September be February. around that time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not right. expecting a delay at this point. Yeah. Right. The weather, I would hope. Fully built, done, everything. The, the building's going to gonna go. be built elsewhere. It's going to come in, and drop it in. Fully yeah. placed. Placed in, then just tie it up. Tie it final in. completion, I believe, or yeah. may, maybe substantial final. completion. But it, it'll be. It should be usable. Great. That's great. Great. Hopefully, we don't have. Eight feet of snow on the ground. <laughs> okay. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve payment requisition number three in the amount of ninety-one thousand two hundred dollars, even to Construction Dynamics Inc. Second. Motion a second. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. That's the last one, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, on the fifteen. Yep. Okay. Now on to the fun stuff. The license. You want to take a moment? Just, just a, a brief update, yes. Uh, yeah. So we have a bit of a different strategy that we're employed after talking with town council relative to the renewals. In past years, the board has taken action to renew a license that has been incomplete for a short term. Perhaps it renewed it until uh, for 30 days or until the first meeting in January. Talking with town council, uh, we believe that uh, a more effective strategy for the, the few licenses that remain unresolved are that the board vote to renew them subject to whatever specific remaining requirements being fulfilled and instruct us to hold the license until those requirements are fulfilled. And what that will do is two, it will do two things. First, it will put the onus on the license holder to uh, take the action needed to be taken before December 31st to comply with any renewal requirements. And second, secondly, it will avoid any need for any board, any further board action relative to a license either between now and the end of the year or even after the end of the year. This is a bit of a different strategy. 
I think we've done a tremendous job, and I, I have to commend Jane uh, and Karen for their efforts to get us to this point here where we're, I think we're down to three, three issues that are out there that we expect will be resolved but are not resolved right now. Um, and that was uh, through a dedicated effort on their part. They work closely with Amy Tachara and the Board of Health Office as well to give a coordinated renewal package to our, uh, our licensees. And I think we've made a lot of progress. It's not perfect, but we've made a lot of progress. But we believe this strategy will effectively compel people to comply. And if they don't, they won't have a license in hand as of January 1st. Everybody understand that? I just, I know you put it in our pack, but what, what are the outstanding issues? Sure. So there is a particular motion that references that. Bear with me one moment. Might as well, might as well. So while, while the town ministry is looking for that, uh, I just want to make sure the public listening at home is, you know, this process starts way back in September, right? Our early October. Early yeah. October. And you know, here we are at the end of December, and we still don't have this completed. So it's not like we haven't given ample opportunity, having been here and available uh, to help them get through the process. So. Uh, if anybody's affected by this negatively, it's upon themselves. They, they brought it upon themselves. So, so there are three. Uh, one is a loyal order of moose um, that uh, we are, again, we're recommending the board renew um, here and instruct the town administrator to notify the licensee that they do not submit the required paperwork by December 29th, which is the Friday before New Year's. The license will not be released and they'd be ordered to cease business operation. In this particular instance, there's a civil fingerprinting requirement. These, no. Sorry, excuse me. I keep confusing it too. So there's a, a, a building um, department inspection certificate they need to have in accordance with the state statute relative to um, safety and egress in the building, which I believe that they're going to be able to obtain, but they have not obtained right now. In the second case, Christopher's Market, um, they have gone through a transfer, which the board approved, um, which uh, the issue is not with the transfer, but it's with the regarding the fact that they do not have a license to sell food at the establishment so they're, they've been issued a license as a convenience store but right now they don't have a, a license to sell food a, after January 1st victualist? so is it a common victualist? Is that the one? no no it's a <coughs> convenience store okay. yeah so th they have a, a beer and wine license for a convenience store not a package store and without their food license they're functionally similar to a package store um, so, again, I think we expect that that's going to be addressed by virtue of their actions with the Board of Health. And then the third item is a speedway where we have a need for uh, TIP certification and, and civil fingerprinting for the manager. Um, and that there again, they are a wine and malt beverage off-site consumption license for a convenience store. So those are the three items. Uh, these are all resolvable items uh, for yeah. these licensees. We have very, very clear direction that they'll have about uh, about 10 days to resolve things still between now and when the 29th comes up. I think that that's more than fair. And when did everyone else have to have their paperwork in? So for a, a, for a license under the, an ABCC related license, license, which all three of these are, they're due in the month of November. And sometimes we get them complete in the month of November, sometimes we get them almost complete and we get additional information. But you saw there was a good chunk of them that were in place that were acted upon by the board in the first meeting in, the, in December. And I just have one more question. So right. we modified the policy of just automatically renewing right when we didn't get a response already. And we said we weren't going to do that. We weren't going to be doing <coughs> that um, unless we got the response back. And then they would have to come back and reapply if they didn't comply with what they were supposed to do. That was my recollection of what we did last year and to address the issue of lack of response. So uh, I, I don't recall a modification in any policy. We did have some discussion relative to it last year. We had some conversation with town council about this, and, uh, and the feedback that we received from town council was that there is a requirement that the application be submitted, and that, and that, and that uh, presuming the requirement for the minimum, that the minimum state requirement has been met, um, the ABCC would likely, con after, even after hearing, would consider that the license was submitted for renewal. But even if they didn't, if we were to attempt not to renew it until it got to a hearing down the road, the, li the license would, would, in all likelihood, we would be required to issue it during the appeal period. And so we felt that we could get into all of that, which is certainly worthwhile, but a much more effective thing is to say to them, we have your license and you're not getting it until you give us everything. 
And that, that seems to, that leverages it into a real mm -hmm. issue as of January 1st where they cannot function, they cannot open. Um, any disciplinary action the board wants to take after the fact, certainly within our rights to do, but we kind of felt that where we seem to often end up is in an extension period into January where the license is renewed, but it's, it's only renewed for a short term. Here, we're telling them it'll be renewed, but you can't operate without it on your, physically on your premises. You won't be able to receive it until you've complied. And again, I fully expect these individuals will, will comply uh, based on the timeline that they have to do so, which is, again, almost two full business weeks, um, but well, with including the holiday, maybe one and a half business weeks. All right, any more discussion? Yes. Yeah, just real quick, I, it is disappointing because you guys do a lot of work trying to put all this together every year on the same time, and it's not like these license renewals are surprises to these business owners. I'm as pro-business as it comes, but these people need to cooperate with the town and with you guys, and I think the message needs to be sent that we have deadlines. We can't hold the train for two, pe three people when you have how many licenses total. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Brooks, I can see you nodding your head in agreement over there. I mean, it's, it's got to be, you want to pull your hair out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating for the folks that work here. just want to point that out. Thank you. One of my biggest pet peeves. So. Okay, I'll take the first motion. All right, Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following common victual licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. We have Dion Bagels, Dos Lobos, Dunkin' Donuts, which is Holly Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, which is Noriad, Maine, Group One Entertainment, DBA, Hillview Country Club, Heavenly Donuts, Joe Fish, Mario's Restaurante, McDonald's, Breyer's Store, Sports Spirits and Steaks, Teresa's Prime slash Girl 19, The Lobster Claw, uh, Vallasa Inc., DBA Subway, and Wendy's. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? So the Subway, this one here, or C, what, uh, C I'm sorry, Speedway. Did we, was Speedway on that? That's coming up a few motions on right, the road. That wasn't on there. Right. No, 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 it's three more. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't on there. Okay, good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Next one. Oh, no, take your time. <laughs> your signature is pretty easy. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following common victor all alcohol licenses to expire on December 31st, 2018, subject to all regulatory department approvals. Our requirements, excuse me, that's Dos Lobos, Joe Fish, Group One Entertainment, DBA Hillview Country Club, Teresa's Prime, Slash Girl 19, and Sports, Spirits, and Steaks. Second. And second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? <coughs> None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following package store all alcohol licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. That's One Stop Liquors and New England Beverage. Second. You got a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following package store slash wine and malt beverage licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. There's Ryer Store and Route 28 Lucky Mart. Second. A motion and a second. Any more discussion? None heard. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Sunday entertainment licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. That's Sports, Spirits, and Steaks, Group One Entertainment, DBA Hillview Country Club, and Teresa's Prime slash Grill 19. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Chairman, I move to renew the following Class 1 license to expire January 1, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. And that will be Bobcat of Boston, Inc. A motion and a second. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Mrs. Pinupelli. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will be abstaining on the Class 1 and Class 2 licenses as I have a family member that holds a Class 2 license, and all Class 1 licenses automatically have a Class 2 license. So I will be abstaining from any discussion and um, any vote on those matters. Okay. Anybody else? This was this was how it came up 
in terms of the policy. I remember because there were two establishments that we learned from Selectman O'Leary they were extenuating circumstances on the last time. So we granted them extra time. So that that may be where I was thinking we talked about a difference in yeah. our policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not related to the other licensed establishments. So. But we did provide some latitude last yeah. I think it was last year. Maybe yeah, maybe it was fine. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. was yeah. with that unusual. There were unusual yeah. circumstances. Correct. No, there have been no unusual, well, no credible unusual circumstances reported <laughs> to us. <laughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And one abstention? Yes. Okay. Stay. Four zero and one. Uh, class two licenses. Mr. Chairman, I move through the following class two license to expire January 1, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. That's JMM Enterprises, DBA A1 Auto Sales, and PT Auto Sales. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I'm second by Mr. Menupelli. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? In abstention? One State. abstention. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following automatic amusement uh, device license to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Cowabunga's Entertainment, LLC. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussions? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Unanimous. Uh, these are the outstanding issues. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory de department requirements. Loyal Order of the Moose Club, all alcoholic, fraternal, uh, automatic amusement device, jukebox, Christopher's Market, package store slash wine and malts, Speedway, package store wine and malts. As we discussed earlier, further instruct the town administrator to notify said licensees that they do not submit all prior required paperwork by December 29, 2017. Their license will not be released and they will be ordered to cease and desist on all business operations. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> That's it? That's the last one you say? Yep, we're up to the appointments now. Okay. Mr. Schultz will take the appointment. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, we have the, the first up is the Board of Appeals, but on this one, uh, Mr. Bellavance, who's here in the audience with us tonight, is on here, but he's also on the CPC, so I, I believe we wanted to table this one until we can get an opinion from town council whether there be any um, well, type of conflict there. I mean, wouldn't CPC just be a liaison? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Bellavance. I, I'd sorry. have to ask you to come up. Yeah. No, I am the uh, liaison from the CPC to the zoning board. Um, they did have a vacancy, and we were just chatting at the last meeting. So it's an associate it. vacancy. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. We'll have to get back to that one. Then. You want to table that one? Yes. Okay. Well, we could. Uh, unless you're not recommending the incumbent, I think we could act on the incumbent yeah, well there are two openings <laughs> no, he's right no, mr larry's right yeah. we could do if you're not recommending the incumbent you know, let us know now if you want we could do everyone I, I would recommend the incumbent yeah, yeah. then yeah. why don't we do that appointment no, and then we can act on the other one the vacancy the vacancy hold the vacancy hold the vacancy, hold the vacancy. Hold the vacancy. it's a vacancy all right, Mr. Chairman, I, I move to place in, the in nomination the following name, Jennifer Platt, the incumbent for reappointment as an associate as a member of the Board of Appeals for a term to expire on December 31, 2020. In addition, there's one other opening that we're going to hold uh, in abeyance uh, pending further uh, review of our board. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Mrs. Mignopelli. Uh, how many other people put their names in to be considered for that. There's uh, seven additional names outside of Ms. Platt. And I don't see Mr. Bellavance yet. There were six on there and plus him is seven, right? Yeah, and Mr. That, Bellavance would be That's for seven. two openings, right? But Mr. Bellavance is looking for an associate for the vacancy, right? These would be two voting, voting the motion members? The is written as an associate. This is an associate member. 
these both associate positions. For reappointment as an associate, okay. So there's a comment. I'm recommending you reappoint it. And there's another position that we're going to hold in the bands for tonight anyway. So So right now the motion is uh, to reappoint Ms. Platt and Mr. O'Leary, I believe, second. Okay. So I have a motion. I have a second. Any more discussion? I just know Mrs. Platt has been serving for a number of years in the associate positions, uh, position and has filled in on a number of occasions and done a great job. She's been a terrific member. Okay. And do we need a roll call vote on this? Yeah. I think we do, right? So, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Ms. Platt. Mr. Messeri. Ms. Platt. Mr. Schultz. Ms. Platt. Mrs. Mignapelli. Ms. Platt. And the chair votes Mrs. Platt. Thank you, Mrs. Platt, for your continued service. Next, uh, Forest Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination of the following name for reappointment to the Forest Committee for a term to expire on December 31, 2020. There's one opening, and the incumbent is Stephen Nathan. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, I, I've spoken to Mr. Nathan several times, and I'm glad that he finally got his, uh, his paperwork in, but he's been wanted to re-up his time on the Forest Committee, and he's been a great asset, and we're happy that he's going to continue for another term. So, any other comments? If not, I'll, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. <coughs> Regarding process serving constables, Mr. Chairman, I move to place a nomination of the following names for reappointment as process serving constables for terms to expire on December 31, 2018. There are five openings, there are five incumbents who are John Fiorello, Paul Dorsey, Douglas Lab, uh, David Rosati, and Paolo DeRosers. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? You know, are they, <coughs> are they actively utilizing the, the ability to I serve? I, a few of them are. I recognize the names from my practice. Yeah. Yeah. But I have the same question. Uh, but not, not all of them. Not all. But I believe the limit is five, right? That's correct. I know the so board's policy. We were at four for a long time. We added a fifth two years ago, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, at some point in, in this particular position over the years, sometimes there's interest, sometimes there isn't. Some people like to have it, never use it. Someone else comes in looking for it. We don't have one. Uh, so maybe if we could, uh, you know, going forward, whoever's a liaison, um, just find out if people are active, actively using it or not, rather than just holding the holding the Is ticket. there a way to spread the wealth? A little bit, so everybody gets some. Well, no, that's a, but some of them don't use it. Oh, All the years, some don't. some of them don't even provide any services. Ah, they don't okay. do it anymore. You know. I thought it was because we didn't task them. Well, no. usually it's local attorneys that just you, you you get somebody you're comfortable with and you use the same person all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, we should probably do that. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Next. Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination in the following name for reappointment as detail constable for a term to expire on December 31, 2018. And that's Mr. Jerry Berg. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination the following name for reappointment as member of the Taxation Aid Committee for a term to expire on December 31, 2020. There's one opening, and Ms. Mary Crenny, the incumbent. Second. Motion and second. Any more discussion? I would recommend. I wish she could get me a break of my taxes. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> sure she could be bribed. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination of following names for reappointment appointment as members of the Library Trustees for terms to expire on December 31, 2020. There are two openings. There's Marcy Bailey, the incumbent, <coughs> Geraldine Vassil, and Michelle Muller. I have a second. I'll second it, and then I want to make a comment. I have a motion and a second, Mr. Messier. Uh, due to my schedule and the fact that a second individual applied for one of the uh, uh, two open positions, uh, or three open positions, I should say, uh, I have not caught up with uh, that person and I haven't caught up with the uh, chairman of the library. So at this point, I recommend that we uh, vote uh, Marcy Bailey, uh, reappoint her, and that uh, we hold off the other two until our next meeting when I have an opportunity to do my job. No problem. I didn't see this one in our meeting packet. That's what? I didn't see it in our meeting packet. Yeah, particular. Was, it was it's added. a second, it was added. It was the second list of. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. So you want to go ahead and modify the motion to just vote from. One individual at this time. Mrs. Manapelli, a reappoint, and to oh. hold off on the other two. There's only one more opening, and until I have an opportunity okay. to catch up with the second candidate and the chair right. and yeah. the chair. Mr. Chair, if I may, I'd like to re restate the motion, please. Mr. Chairman, I move the place in nomination, uh, Ms. Marcy Bailey, for reappointment as member of the Library Trustees for a term to expire on December 31, 2020, and to hold in abeyance the appointment of the second opening. Second. And I, will motion that, and second. I will get that done before our next meeting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Messeri. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I would like to stay on the record. Ms. Bailey is a tireless advocate for all things library. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I move the place of nomination of following name for reappointment as an associate member of the Library Trustees for a term to expire on December 31, 2020. There's one opening, and the incumbent is Thomas Kelly. Motion is to have second. a second. Second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. Th Thomas Kelly uh, was on the board, and uh, due to circumstances, including he might end up leaving the community, uh, he wish to uh, stay on as an associate member. I recommend that we appoint him as such. Mr. Larry, did you? Nope. Oh, no, sir. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Unanimous. On the Cultural Council, Mr. Chairman, I move the place in a nomination of following names for reappointment to the Cultural Council for terms to expire on December 31, 2020. There are seven openings. We have four incumbents, Margaret Bradbury, C. Jean Clark, Philip Healy, and Barbara O'Neill Smith. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? None? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move the place and nomination of the following name for reappointment to the Youth Services Committee for a term to expire on December 31, 2020. There's one opening, and it's Ms. Amy Jachara. Second. second. I have a motion and a second by Mrs. Menupelli. Any discussion? No, not heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, is, it, is everything signed? Mr. Mitchell? Okay. If we miss something, Jane, let us know. Yep. I think we got it. Well, she will. Town Administrator's Report. Uh, uh, before we go on, though, um, again, Jane, I want to thank you again for your ex outstanding efforts in getting all these licenses pulled together. It's a lot of paperwork, a lot of moving parts, and without you, we wouldn't get it done. So thank you for the effort. It's fantastic. Uh, Town Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a note for the record that I submitted a revised report, which was placed in the package this afternoon. It's in the Dropbox folder entitled the TA Report 1218-2017 Revised. <coughs> uh, the report included a notice that I received from National Grid regarding their yearly operational plan. Uh, it's more commonly known as their, um, their 
Hoover Growth and Weed Control Plan, where they go through and they treat within there right away in order to uh, eliminate or reduce the prevalence of overgrowth in that right away <coughs> to maintain access to the infrastructure that provides the electricity or the transmission lines that are in that right away. I just would offer a friendly reminder that trash recycling collection will be delayed during the Christmas and New Year's holiday weeks. Collection will occur on Wednesday, December 27th and Wednesday, January 3rd. The town's Christmas tree collection will occur on Saturday, January 13th. Trees must be curbside by 6.30 a.m. There's been some discussion uh, informally and I think some discussion on social media, but uh, just to kind of formalize things, I'm pleased to announce that the town received $384,000 in State Department of Transportation grant funds to construct a sidewalk on Haverhill Street from Foley Drive to North Street. This location has been on the town's prioritized sidewalk needs listing and the completion of the project will fill in a gap in sidewalk along Haverhill Street. Funding for the pro project from the state was made possible by the town's adoption of a complete streets policy, which the board participated in uh, roughly 18 months ago. The town also received $16,000 for radar speed uh, for a radar speed reader and three feedback speed signs. And a butters meeting will be held on Thursday, January 4th, 2018, in room 14 here at Town Hall at 6 p.m. A copy of the invitation mailed to residents was attached to the report, and we encourage residents uh, to attend. Uh, I wish to thank Town Planner Danielle McKnight and Town Engineer Mike Sorgan for their efforts preparing the town's complete streets policy and for their efforts submitting the town's funding application. And again, I encourage the residents or any interested member of the public to attend the meeting on January 4th. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes my comments this evening. Okay. <coughs> Great. So that'll take it from almost the whole length of Table Street. All the way to North. And then... No, that's it. And then it goes up to the up to the by your house. Yeah, it stops at uh, Peter Road. Yeah, Peter Road. So it goes mm -hmm. almost from the Andover line all the way down. Yeah. Past the school. Fantastic. A lot of runners run that route. That'd be nice yeah. to we, not the dodge cars. We have an aggressive timeline for construction to construct during next construction season, 2018. Uh, we have a bid package that we've developed. We won't be putting it out to bid until after this meeting, so we can try to take the feed the feedback. I think as everyone can imagine, that there may be issues along the road where there is uh, private property may be on the right of way and we'll try to work through those issues with the involved folks, but it obviously will be a significant benefit to the community. For sure. So that meeting is uh, 4th and room 14. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. O'Leary, you want to start us off? Uh, all I want to do is uh, wish uh, the community and my board members, and colleagues here, uh, uh, Merry Christmas, <coughs> Happy Holidays, <coughs> healthy. I hope you get healthy, uh, <laughs> healthy and prosperous new year coming up. And uh, if you're traveling, you know, safe travels. But uh, enjoy the enjoy the holidays, enjoy your family, and uh, hope Santa Claus is good to you. <laughs> so thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Masseri. I have to ditto Steve because it's probably the exact words I've used. But, uh, you know, all in all, I'd like, uh, I like to thank all the board members. Uh, uh, this has been a very productive year, and it wouldn't be, have been that way if we hadn't worked together as a team. We didn't always agree with one another, but we worked together for the best interests of the town. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of the uh, members of the uh, town hall, the town administrator, and all our departments for their efforts in making this a very, very successful year. I hope everybody has a safe and uh, happy Thanksgiving, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, and be safe, and uh, uh, you know, the weather, we're getting into the winter weather, we don't need any accidents, so drive safe. No, same as everyone else. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah to our Jewish uh, residents as well. And I'm sure we're getting killed on Facebook right now because of our sweaters, but that's good. It's all for a good cause. What's the, what's the feedback? I hear, I hear we're not doing too well. I don't know. I haven't, I've been, I haven't no, really had a chance to. the school committee's got us beat. Sounds like it. But you know well, what? My prediction was, you know, they're poor dressers anyway. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> well, but Scott, I think <laughs> it makes me a little nervous with Scott Buckley being so exposed in the school like that. Uh, well, we can, we we can take the donation out of their funding. 
<laughs> but thank you, Mrs. Minupelli. Oh, I hope not. I hope we won. But vote for us, please. Yeah, and just to echo the sentiments, I wish everyone uh, happy, holy, healthy holidays and happy, holy, healthy new year. And thank you to my fellow board members and to the TA. And I just note, too, there was a really dangerous area on our street. And I contacted the TA and within, I think, a week's time that got resolved with better lighting in the area. So I just wanted to thank you for that. That's a big improvement. And there's a ton of kids and a ton of dogs and a ton of pedestrians and a ton of runners and a ton of bikers. And so that was a, that's a, that was a big safety improvement. So thank you for, and to the DPW for getting that taken care of. And uh, that's it. Aren't you happy, Mr. Maypay, that we've got three new feedback speed signs like we have on Central Street? Yes. I, I mean, <laughs> I didn't notice it until you mentioned it to me. So it must be flashing at you. I, I, I can't. The first time I drove by that and I mentioned it to Select O'Leary, I said, yeah, it's great, but it, it, keeps, it keeps blinking. And I, I said, the, the neighbor must... He probably can't stand that. He said, well, it only blinks if you're speeding by it. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> but we have a few for more. For the record, <laughs> she's a speeding police so, listening. For the record, I corrected that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, and thank you, board members, for willingness to do this this evening. Um, and I hope it brings great awareness to the neighbor, helping neighbor. Because what's right, our commitment to community is everything. So. Thank you for humbling me and doing this along with together. Uh, I would, besides thanking my board members, I want to thank our legislators. A big thanks to them this year. Um, you know, they really come through for us in a lot of ways and some very important money that's going to have a positive effect across the community. So, uh, Representative Jones and Senator Tarr, thank you. Uh, I know they're home listening tonight. And I want to thank the community. You know, this year, we had a special town meeting in addition to all the other meetings we have and that's not a normal thing and they came out and so it's been a big year for the community to come out and vote so I want to thank the entire community uh, for their continued support and the things that we try to do so I'll leave that with a just a, a message to everyone to have a beautiful and wonderful holiday it's an opportunity to sit back and recharge the batteries and enjoy your family and uh, and I look forward to seeing you all in 2018. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I will give you a motion to adjourn. Oh. Into, executive, into executive session. Oh, that's right. We forgot we do have one more executive session. Motion to move into <laughs> executive, executive session. session. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Aye. Masseri. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mr. Minupelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye.